Tucci. And even later, we're going to wish the one and only Oprah Winfrey a very happy early birthday. But first, as always, here are your pop star stories for today. First up on pop star today, guys, Jonah Hill. Turns out that the actor has beef with the beloved Mandalorian icon Baby Yoda, what? we think. It's short. Let's break this down. A few weeks ago, Hill said in an interview that his Don't Look Up co-star Leonardo DiCaprio forced him to watch the series The Mandalorian. But Jonah, just not really that big of a Star Wars fan, so he didn't really love it or whatever. It seems like it's no big deal. Well, the way the story was posted online, maybe it sort of made it seem like maybe Jonah Hill is in some weird way in a big feud with baby Grogu. <laughs> Poking fun at the headline, Jonah wrote on Instagram, I want to say this once for the record officially, baby Yoda and I are dear friends <laughs> and text at least once a week. <laughs> okay. So it seemed like then everything was fine sure. until Jonah hopped back on social media this week with a video that caused a second wave of concern. Uh oh. This black guy is from my surfboard is not from a fist fight I got into with Baby Yoda because of our falling out. <laughs> and then it escalated a little bit from there because in the caption he wrote, Disney Plus definitely did not pay me off to protect the fact <laughs> wow. that one of their marquee stars has a big mouth wow. and would definitely catch hands, catch hands if he didn't sucker punch me with his little baby green fist. <laughs> okay. That's a long way to go there, but Woo. thought it was in, in really it. good fun. Yeah. Jonah's yeah. been sharing all of this ridiculousness <laughs> online, so fun. we know it's a good fun. And by the way, if you're watching Boba Fett, yes. like the spinoff, if you watched it yesterday, mm -hmm. you know the return of the Mandalorian. Yeah. I'll leave it at that. I don't leave it right there. Leave it. Wow. That's that so good. Tease. Next up, Celine Dion, the legendary singer 1996 ballad, it's all coming back to me now, is absolutely exploding on TikTok. I don't know if you're familiar with the trend. Hoda, I know you are. People are recording themselves doing their best dramatic lip syncs with some pretty impressive lighting and prop works. Here's an example. Check out how fellow Canadian singer Michael Buble honored Celine here. My, my next clip, that is obviously the cast of This Is Us. Uh, yeah. okay. Uh, that okay. They must have a lot of time on that set. <laughs> There's Sterling K. Brown, Mandy Moore, <laughs> John Huerta. So they, yeah. they, here's Buble. Okay, here's Buble. Yeah, you want to see what Buble is? Here's Buble. Here's Buble. Here's Buble. Here's Buble. Probably the real Stanley Cup, too. There's uh, not the only ones who are messing around. On, oh, here's yours. Okay, here's, uh, here's, take a look. We're off at least. I was going to ask you about that. I think it was for dramatic for effect. Oh, yeah. By the way, did you see Jenna's thirst trap yesterday? No. Yeah. Well, first of all, I learned what a thirst trap was yesterday. It's, what is it? What Posing is sexy like, you know, how Martha Stewart What's did. What's it called? A thirst oh, that's trap. What she was just thirst like, like, trap. Like the young people post provocative like, pictures. Kim okay. That's like what? Not, called Instagram, right? AKA. JBH was just like a librarian yesterday. Yeah, she, oh, okay. she, went, she went sexy librarian. It's Got worth, it. It's worth a check. Yeah. Next up, David Beckham. Get ready, dads, because we're all going to feel this probably one day. On Wednesday, Beckham sharing some crushing news about his 10-year-old daughter, Miss Harper 7, writing on Instagram, Harper 7 mentions she has a crush. Whoa. And this is Daddy's face. But it's okay, she said, Daddy, you are my only Aww. talent. Aww. As a father of three girls, you gotta have to you got to hold on to that Valentine <laughs> as long as possible. Oh, it's a tough one. Yep, so you're a good, you know, your jiu-jitsu kicks in, your black belt when they're <laughs> in <laughs> high school. All right, finally, uh, Macaulay Culkin, the home alone actor and partner Brenda Song are engaged. The couple who began dating four years ago welcomed their first child together, Dakota Song Culkin, last spring. And although Macaulay and Brenda are typically very private about their relationship and family, a recent paparazzi photo. Uh, of songs sporting a hefty looking rock on that finger seems to confirm all the good news. So we wanted to wish them a very um, big congratulations. Yeah, cool. Big, big right. congratulations. Ah, that's great. And we'll go ahead and turn to a few more important headlines. Now it's Popstar Plus after all. First up, Bel Air, a new teaser is out for Peacock's dramatic remake of the classic 90s sitcom. The preview gives a peek inside the darker origin story of how Will finds himself stuck with family in Bel Air. Where are we going? To the airport. You're gonna stay with your aunt and your uncle. What? Damn! Hold up, wait a minute. Y'all thought I was finished? Oh. When I would have asked tomorrow, y'all thought it was winning? 
See, that looks good. You know why it looks good? Because the first season of Bel Air is going to premiere on Super Bowl Sunday. And you don't premiere things on Super Bowl Sunday unless they're really good. So we'll be looking forward to that. Finally, speaking of new trailers, how about some Medea? Tyler Perry's alter ego is back in the first look at the next chapter in the Medea series. This movie marks Perry's 12th time embodying the beloved character, who, by the way, happens to be based on Perry's own mother and aunt. And in the preview, it seems like, well, not much has changed for the over-the-top grandmother since we first met her more than two decades ago. My baby is graduating. I am so proud of you. Thank you for letting me stay here. Come here any time you want, day or night, as long as you don't stay too long. You leave right after graduation, right, baby? We're kind of forever. Who is this? I can just proud. I'm a brown too. No, you, you're more. We're all here about to break loose now. There's the legal way, then there's the Medea. Okay. Brawless and lawless. Ooh. Sometimes you just gotta do crazy stuff. And that looks fun too. A Medea Homecoming is set to start streaming on Netflix February 25th. Those are your headlines. Coming up next, comedian Jim Gaffigan is telling us what he watches for a good laugh. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Ali Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Ali Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. And welcome back to Popstar Plus. We are delighted to say that our friend Jim Gaffigan is the latest guest for our What I Watch series. The very funny comedian revealing what he watches that might surprise people. And where does somebody so funny turn for a good laugh themselves? Check it out. What I watch when I need a good laugh. Um, well, there's so many different uh, comedians that I enjoy. Anyone from Seinfeld to Nate Bargazzi, Mark Norman, this guy Simpson, Janelle is really amazing. They're, they're all good. There's a British comedian, Phil Wong. So that's what I watch when I want to laugh. What I watch for the theme song Gosh, you know, I'm a, a kid of the 70s and 80s, so, you know, I think there's nothing really better than the Jeffersons, but um, I also, I think the theme song to any Law and Order is my favorite. What I watch to distress is explained on Netflix stuff that's informative, like even YouTube videos about history of, of different countries, or I love different cultures, so I'll distress by learning about, um, you know, uh, you know, different segments of uh, geography in Spain. You know, I love that. I know I sound like an interesting guy, but I do enjoy it. What I watch that might surprise people is you know, having kids, you're exposed to movies that you might not watch or you might be too cynical to watch. You know, life is just kind of like, all right, I'm not doing this Harry Potter stuff. So, I mean, that's one of the, the many great things of having kids. So 
what, what I really liked, and I remember I tweeted about it, is I really liked that first movie, Sing. And that might surprise people. It might surprise people that I'm a huge Jennifer Hudson fan. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I didn't realize it until there, and then I saw Cats with my daughters, and it's just like, she's unbelievable. That might surprise people. What I watch that inspires me, movies like Rudy or something like that, or Miracle on Ice, but I would say that what inspires me, as corny as it sounds, is some of those Instagram kind of fitness guys um, that, you know, I stumble upon, you know, the guys that are kind of like, no one's showing up, no one's coming to help you, you gotta do it yourself. And, you know, I know that's about, um, those are usually for fitness, but I use it more for writing, <laughs> you know, where, because being a comedian, uh, it's, it's, it's self-assignment. I don't think I follow The Rock, but, you know, along the same lines, but they're more of these uh, fitness guys that kind of have a military background. <laughs> What I watch to prepare for my Netflix special, Comedy Monster. The thing about comedy specials is it really comes down to the material, but there is an interest in making it visually fresh. You don't want someone to think it's some other special. And so that's, that's what I watch. But you know, some of it is, uh, if I have a topic that I'm looking into for a special, I will do some research, but not tons. Because usually it's just stand-up is so point of view driven. But if there's, you know, I, I had one special called Pale Tourist where I was traveling to different countries. So I would do a lot of research watching history or cultural uh, analysis of different countries. In Comedy Monster, I did have some pandemic material. I think it's just, you know, comedians, you have to be authentic. And uh, initially I wasn't planning on doing that, but it's just, we would be living in denial if we didn't address it, you know? Um, but I also talk uh, a fair amount on um, topics. Like I think with my standup, if you heard the topics, you'd be like, well, that doesn't sound fun at all. But I talk about, motorcycles i talk about hawaii you know my family and i went to hawaii i talk about parenting and my relationship with my wife and how that's changed it's weird with each comedy special you kind of want to um you want to challenge yourself but you also want to challenge the relationship you have with an audience because stand-up is a conversation and it's, a, you know, with comedy specials, it's conversation with a good friend. And the reason we love these friends is because they challenge us and we don't have the same exact conversation. Like people want to hear, um, they, they want to see a, a friendship evolve, you know, and they, you know, maybe they don't agree with everything you say, but they appreciate your point of view. Comedy Monster is now streaming on Netflix and I've dedicated it to you, so go watch it. Big thanks to Jim for hanging out with us, and again, you should and can catch Jim's Comedy Monster special on Netflix. Coming up, we're gonna get the scoop on Stanley Tucci's brand new miniseries. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? 
This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. And we are back. It is Pop Star Plus Emmy winner and Oscar nominee Stanley Tucci has an exciting new project playing an American treasure hunter in the miniseries La Fortuna. And he spoke to the third hour all about the role. We are back with one of our favorites, the incredibly talented Stanley Tucci. He won a Golden Globe for his role as Adolf Eichmann in the war film Conspiracy. Then he went on to earn himself an Academy Award nomination for his role in The Lovely Bones. And of course, playing Nigel in the classic film The Devil Wears Prada, of course, my favorite, The Imposters. Now, Stanley is adding Treasure Hunter to his resume in the new show La Fortuna. Stanley plays Frank Wilde, an adventurer who travels the world in search for deep sea treasure. My team and I have no idea which galleon that is down there. But if you remember the beginning of Titanic, when they open up the safe and they find nothing but wet paper. I think we just got a little bit luckier. <laughs> Yes! I know, like, like a, is this a documentary? Uh, right, exactly, uh, exactly. Uh, <laughs> Stanley, welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you. Uh, so, nice to see you, too. Well, so here's the deal. So this, this it's, it's basically a true story, but told in two languages. Tell us about this. Yes, it's told in, in, in two languages. It's a Spanish-American co-production, uh, which you don't often... See, and when uh, the, uh, the Spanish people speak to each other, they speak in Spanish, and it's subtitled uh, for for when it, when it's airing in America. When it's airing uh, in Spain, we're subtitled in Spanish because we're speaking oh. English. It's right. incredibly well done by this brilliant uh, filmmaker uh, Alejandro Menabar. How cool is that? I am so intrigued, for the record, by your backdrop. I mean, I'm trying to focus on the questions that I have for you, but I'm like, the paint brushes and there's this picture on the wall behind you. I'm just, I'm so intrigued. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm in this paint, this, this my painting st studio office. Oh, it's, it's, okay. I'll, I'll stay on task. But <laughs> yeah. I am so intrigued. So you talk about the fact, you know, you were just mentioning that the show is not only, you know, it's start, shot partly in Spanish and also um, it was shot in Spain. What was it like, the experience there filming overseas? Well, it was great. I mean, I've shot in Europe a, a lot. Uh, I, I live I live in London, which is why I'm not sitting there with you right now. <laughs> but it, it, um, it, it was wonderful. I mean, you know, making a movie is almost the same just about anywhere. You, you you go, um, but it was it was I think it was especially difficult uh, because it was during the second wave of COVID, mm -hmm. uh, and yet we were allowed to proceed, but under very strict uh, guidelines. So I think it was particularly difficult for the crew because they were wearing masks, mm -hmm. uh, you know, 15 hours a day, sure, and, yeah. and that's really difficult. 
Stanley, I'm actually also going to go off topic here because I have been waiting for you to come on the show because ever since um, I got your cookbook, we have been doing Tucci Tuesdays in my house, which means on Tuesdays we cook from Tucci's cookbook. <laughs> One of the recipes oh actually has become part of like my holiday meal. But uh, you, you love food. I love you that. have such a passion for food. Clearly you have a passion for art as well. Um, just, just tell us what food means to you just mm. to continue to inspire me to keep cooking. <laughs> <laughs> what food means to me? Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah, I love that. It means everything to me. It's sort of all I can think about. I mean, <laughs> you know, I started doing this this series. CNN came to me and asked me to do this series uh, and a few years ago. So we, and we've been able to, to make it happen, this, this searching for Italy. And it's been a lifelong dream of mine to explore the regional cooking of Italy, you know, in as much detail as possible. So it means everything to me. It's the first thing I think about when I wake up in the morning and the last thing I think about. Me too. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> and, and, you know, which is ironic because I know you're you're in remission for your cancer. You opened up about it last year. Yeah. And, and yeah. one of the things that, you know, the tough part about it was it robbed your ability for a while to eat. So mm. do you have a, a greater mm. a greater appreciation for food now and what it means to us? I do. I do. I, you know, when you're forced to go without something that you love, just like you're, if you're forced to go without someone that you love, uh, you appreciate them and or it much more when you're able to have it back. If you're lucky enough to have it back. And I got very lucky. Uh, mm -hmm. I can taste and eat almost every, uh, uh, almost everything now. Uh, in fact, my sense of taste and smell are almost heightened mm -hmm. uh, and more than they were before, oddly enough. And you're in remission now and everything's great. Oh, yeah, no, everything's great. I mean, this particular kind of cancer now, um, they actually have a blood test for it. And I was just tested after I had a scan and got the more than all clear. Oh, that's great. Clear. That's great. Thanks. You are great. such a delight. We're out of time, so I can't talk about you playing Clive Davis, but I'm really uh, looking forward to that. Look, you can't wait. Yeah, that was fun. So that good. Fun. So Thank good. you, Stanley, for joining us. Really appreciate it. That is the great Stanley Tucci. And by the way, you can find La Fortuna on AMC+. Plus. Coming up next, an Oprah flashback and a birthday wish. That's next. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. In the city of angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Ali Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today Show's newest fan. Little Al Roker. Welcome back, everybody. You know what? Oprah Winfrey turns. 68 this weekend. You know, through the years, she's had so many wonderful memories with us on today. This time, we thought it'd be fun to travel all the way back to 1986 when she spoke about her first acting role in a little film called The Color Purple. This is the kind of Hollywood success story that Hollywood used to make movies about. A local TV talk show host suddenly lands a role in a major motion picture by one of the world's most famous directors, and in her very first performance, she wins an Academy Award nomination. Mm -hmm. But that is the true story of Oprah Winfrey, mm -hmm. who is nominated for Best Actress in a Supporting Role for her overwhelming portrayal of the character Sophia in the hit movie, The Color Purple. Hit movie is right, $60 million so far, and that's really wonderful. Good morning. I can't Thanks. tell you how anxious I was to meet you and how happy I am that I have now met you. Well, I'm, I'm equally great, thrilled. Great, great Just performance. Thrilled. Where were you and who told you 
that you won the Academy Award? Where was I? I was actually in Steven Spielberg's office with Willard Pugh, who plays um, Harpo. And Steven, this was after the second screen test, and Steven had called us upstairs to, to tell us whether it was going to be yay or nay. And I, I wasn't sure because it could have been, well, you were wonderful, but. And so we were sitting in the office. You're talking about how you got the part now? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. And, and when I was told that I had it, well, of course, you know, I was discovered by Quincy Jones, who was going through Chicago and saw me. I didn't know that. Oh, you didn't know that? No. Oh, gosh. gosh. That's, how, that's how I got Before discovered. Before that, you were in high school, but let's go a little further. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, yeah, I was doing my talk show in Chicago, and Quincy saw me on the air, which allowed me to be screen tested. Right. So, after the second screen test, Stephen called uh, Willard and I upstairs, and he said, I just want you to know that the chemistry between you is, is, is very good. I really like what I saw today, because we've done all these improvisations with, with uh, Danny Glover and, and um, Whoopi. And he said, I want you to know that you've got it. I got, got, got it. This was April Fool's Day, as a matter of fact. You've got the part. I thought it, it's the best, single best feeling I've ever had. Well, what about the feeling when you heard you won the Academy Award nomination? That's the second best feeling I've ever <laughs> Where had. Where were you? I was, I was in my office in, yeah? in Chicago. And the phone rang? Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, we were watching over the monitors, and I heard Margaret Avery's name. Which I thought, well, that's wonderful for Margaret. She plays in the movie also. Yeah, she, she plays Shug. So yeah. I thought, well, of course, I'm not going to be nominated if Margaret's nominated. And okay. we both were. Now, you are, Sophia. You're a very strong, very mm -hmm. sturdy woman in this movie. Yeah, I know. You say sturdy instead of big. Thanks, Sophia. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of emotion. And yeah. you hadn't been a professional actor. So how did you get this performance? Well, I, I think... It's because Quincy was going through Chicago, saw me in the air, Reuben Cannon, who's a... No, no. How did you bring yourself to deliver this kind of performance oh, okay. in the film? My greatest fear was that I would not be able to give my best. Right. And I was so afraid uh, after the second day, because Stephen had asked me if I could cry in a scene that was later omitted. It was the worst moment of my life, because if Steven Spielberg says, can you cry, you want to give him a bucket or two. Mm -hmm. Well, when I stood there trying to cry, thinking of my parakeet that died when I was seven, <laughs> thinking of every horrible thing that ever happened to me. I couldn't do it. Until I started plucking out lashes, trying to stick them under my lenses, trying to cry. Still couldn't cry, and then went home and cried all night that night because I couldn't cry. And I later had a conversation with Adolf Caesar, who told me, what you do is give yourself over to the character. Let the character take control. If the character wants to cry, the character will cry. If you build a history, a life for the character, which is what I learned to do. Before you cry in The Color Purple, you are a very tough lady. Yeah. Who is going to marry a young man named Harpo. Yeah. Harpo is intimidated by his father and brings you home to see his father, Danny Glover. Here we go. This here, Sophia. Sophia, that's a pretty name, huh? Sophia, Sophia, Sophia. I was going to get married. Look like you got yourself in trouble. No, sir, I ain't in no trouble. Big, though. Who the daddy? Harpo. How he know that? He know, because he's the only one. Celie, <laughs> give me some lemonade. Yeah. Young women no good these days. Got their legs open for every Tom, Dick, and Harpo. No need to think I'm gonna let my boy marry you just cause you're in the family way. Ain't cold enough. He young and limited. Pretty gal like you can put anything over on him. Mm. One of the injustices of the world this year is that Danny Glover did not get nominated for that great performance in The Color Purple. Yeah, I think he deserved it. Largely because of Danny Glover's performance, perhaps, uh, there have been some critics among the black community, especially black males, who have taken issue with the whole notion of the color purple. How do you answer those people? Well, my, my response is that it, this is one woman's story. It is a story of Celie's quest for herself. It is not a movie that's meant to depict the entire history of the black race. You agree about Danny Glover? No, I certainly do. I, I think he should have been nominated, but I, I'm so thrilled that I was, but I, I wished he had. Now, you have a very successful talk show in Chicago. It's going to be syndicated. I believe, by, by this fall, it'll be all over the country, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Now, you're also going to continue to act in films, I hope? I certainly am. I'm going to start doing, I'm doing uh, Native Son, right at the day after Academy Awards. Richard Wright's very great yeah. novel. Mm -hmm. Too bad Paul Robeson isn't still alive to yeah. play in that part, yeah. huh? Yeah. I wish you well. I mean, I could talk to you for hours and oh, hours. Oh, I love you, Gene I, Shallow. I, I, I love, love you. She had such promise then. It's a shame that that young actress would go on to, to nothing, really. 
No TV success, no movie success. Come on, people. Incredible. Happy birthday, Oprah. We love you. Thanks for joining us on Popstar Plus. Have a great day. We'll see you soon. I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post, and I know trends. Each week, I'm here with the must-have fashion and beauty products at a price you'll like in Style Finder. I'm fashion and beauty expert Makon Lovu, and I'm bringing you industry insiders and those in the know to share all the buzzworthy products sweeping social media and influencer trends. And I'm Shop All Day contributor Jen Fallick, and I love finding the best versions of everyday items in Better Basics. This is Shop All Day 30 Under 30. Hi, I'm Chassie Post, and we're back today with a new episode of Shop All Day. And get this, we have 30 products for you, all under $30. And don't let the low prices fool you. We have some of our fun and favorite finds that you can afford. We're talking fashion, beauty, home, and organization too. And remember, see that QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's get to it. Let's start with fashion. Now you don't have to spend a fortune to add a sumptuous, subtle, and stylish sweater to your winter uniform. And we've got you with this V-neck sweater from H&M. And when I saw it, I could not wait to try it on. It is so incredibly soft. And this fabric is actually a wool blend with spandex. So it's got some great stretch in it. So it's also really comfy. And what I love about this silhouette is it's got that great oversized trend that we've seen so much of, but it's not too oversized. It's even got a great split here in the hem. And I am really digging these sophisticated neutrals. This light green and the oatmeal, and I cannot believe the price. And if you're more of a cardigan fan, we've got another wardrobe essential that also elevates your every day. Now, this sweater is just as soft as our V-neck. It's actually made out of a viscose blend, and it's also got a little stretch. And I have to say, one of the things I love so much about a cardigan is it's just so easy. You throw it on, and it's a three-season weight. It's kind of a great mid-weight, so that means you can throw this on when it's not too cold when you run out the door and it makes a good sweater coat or you can also use it as a layering piece or you can use it when you're hanging out on the sofa in your joggers and it comes in so many great colors it's even got stripes and again that three-quarter length and ding 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 pockets so you're not gonna believe this next one. It's pretty cute. It's the Chunky Knit Beanie with interchangeable pom-poms. And I have never seen anything like this. And what's so fun about it is, you get a beanie with three different pom-poms. So if you wanna change the look up of your hat, all you gotta do is snap on, snap off. So. The beanies come in six different colors and each beanie comes with their own set of three pom-poms. You get one that's monochromatic, you get one that's made out of yarn, and then you get one that I like to call the statement pom-pom with bold, wild colors. And I think these are so much fun. They come in one size fits all, so they're great for adults and they're also great for kids. Now, we sure do love sets around here at Shop All Day. And you know the only thing better than one velvet scrunchie? A set of 12 velvet scrunchies. And you know, scrunchies really are having a big comeback. I think they're probably the number one hair accessory trend for the past two seasons. So these days, I really look to the scrunchie as a really cool embellishment or a great solution to a not so perfect hair day. I even found two of the colors of 2022, the great magenta and the emerald green. So now let's talk beauty. 2021 was the year of the statement brow. And guess what? This trend isn't going anywhere. So if you've wanted in, you're in luck because this award-winning product from Benefit is about to become your brow's secret weapon. And it's so affordable. This is their Gimme Brow Plus. 
Tinted Volumizing Brow Gel. And I'm such a big fan of Benefit's products and attitude in general. I mean, they really make beauty feel easy and inclusive. I'm always on the hunt for great brow products that help to make my brows look a little bit fuller. And the brand actually says that it helps to tame and volumize and actually tint your brows. It's like a little mascara wand and you just flick it on. It takes almost no time at all. Plus the brand says that it's water resistant and it comes in 10 different shades, two different sizes from mini to standard and well under $30. So with all the hype surrounding this next cult favorite beauty product, you'd be hard pressed to believe the price. Meet the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Eraser and it puts the task in multitasker. And this is another one that I was really excited about trying because it has been a mega bestseller. And I'm always looking for an affordable concealer for under eye. And this really did help brighten up my under eye. I also used it to even out my skin tone and it was so easy. And even though it's full coverage, it felt light and hydrating. And my favorite thing about it is, it actually looks like an eraser. It's got this wonderful little foam applicator, which means you don't need an extra tool. And it's a really clever design. All you have to do is turn it and the concealer replenishes. It comes in lots of different shades. I can't believe that a concealer that works as well is so affordable. So next up, we've got a press on nail kit that's a real game changer. This is the Instant Manny. They're press on nails. They're from one of my favorite nail brands, Olive and June. And oh my goodness, I cannot believe how real they look. And if you're looking for a time saver, these little press on nails are a game changer. It did take me less than 10 minutes when I tried. And the brand says that they can last up to seven days plus these press on nails have come a long way. Now with these, I can experiment with different nail trends. They come in lots of different colors and designs. You can even try out different takes on the French manicure and they come in four different shapes and also four different lengths. Next up, jewelry trends, chain, chain, chains. You heard me talk about what a massive trend chains have been this past year, not only in jewelry, but also as embellishments on shoes, bags, belts, and more. But I think my favorite way to rock the chain trend is with jewelry and I could not get over how chic these necklaces are. We found them at Nordstrom and they are a modern chunky hoop. These look really substantial, but they're not heavy. They come in a great gold and silver finish. And I really love this. Look at this beautiful clasp. It's like a maze clasp. It's so pretty. I would even consider wearing the clasp in the front. So you really can wear these two ways. You can use it to dress up a t-shirt. You can wear it in the summer with a tank, but it also looks fantastic with your crew neck sweaters or even to wear over a turtleneck. Now on to hoops. They're having a major moment this season and this is a timeless and totally stylish set of three graduated hoop earrings. And the thing I like the most about hoops is I think they're probably the most versatile earring style there is. Depending on what you wear them with, hoops can lean boho or classic or modern and these are a really, really beautiful and high quality example of the hoop. They are thin, they are delicate, they're well-made, and you've got three different sizes, starting at two inches on down. Plus, they come in gold and silver, but at these prices, I'd get them both. And lastly, now that some of us are headed back to the office, a great looking backpack is the perfect accessory to help you get back to work in style. So this backpack I think is really stylish. It comes in this great textured faux leather. It's got these high end details like the gold little details here, the zippers. And I also really like the silhouette. It's sleek, it's modern looking. And the size is quite useful. It is perfect for fitting your essentials. You can put your wallet in there, a notebook, you can fit your tablet. And 
When you're carrying something that's a little bit heavier, I think it's a lot more comfortable rather than carrying a heavy bag on your shoulder. So I think this is a great option. It comes in lots of different colors. And can you believe it? Each fabulous find under $30. Let's run through all the products one more time. We've got the H&M V-neck sweater and the draped long sleeve cardigan, the interchangeable palm beanie, the 12 piece scrunchie set, the Benefit Gimme Brow Plus tinted volumizing brow gel, the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Eraser, the Olive and June Press On Instant Manny, the Maze Clasp Link Collar Necklace, the set of three hoops and the B and E Life Backpack. And just so you know, today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. That's it for Style Finder. Up next, Mako and Lohu is talking to beauty expert Millie Almodovar about her favorite affordable finds. Don't go away. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The Sunday Sit-Down with Willie Geist podcast. It's the conversations you want to have with the people you love to meet. Get your money's worth. Unedited, unfiltered. See ya! Sit down with Willie and listen wherever you get your podcasts. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last movie. <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world, because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. I believe, I believe. Every dream, every journey every triumph and it all starts here let the celebration begin the excitement is in the air feel the magic every day she is a superstar <laughs> kayla we are cheering you on and share every moment with us at the winter olympics today today today, today. today is where the games begin nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore Hi there, welcome back. I'm Makon Jovu and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders and they'll share their favorite products and the must have items to shop for right now. And don't forget the QR code at the bottom of your screen. Now use the camera, it's on your smartphone and scan it to shop these products. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. And today we're bringing you 30 products under $30. Uh-huh, yeah, that's right. We have you covered from fashion to the kitchen, but now it's all about a bounty of beauty products that yes, are also under $30. That gets me so excited. Millie Amaldivar is a beauty expert who really understood the assignment. Hey, Millie, it's so good to have you here. Let's dive right in. First of all, how are you doing today? I am doing great, honey. I am doing amazing. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm excited that you're here. Let's get started with these exfoliating gloves. I am so excited to talk about them. What do you use them for? The reason I like these are a few reasons, right? It has this textured surface. So this texture works to really, really, really exfoliate and remove that dry skin that you have. Now, according to the brand, charcoal is a great ingredient because it attracts dirt. You, you put a little soap on it, a little body wash, 
put it on, do it in circular motions. I've used this, I use this two or three times a week. My skin always feels so much softer and smoother after using it. I also love how stretchy they are as well, so they can fit on all size hands. So let's move on from the body, let's talk about the hair. I've seen this next brand all over my social media, Olaplex, let's talk about it. Why is it such a fan favorite? Listen, the brand told me that they sell one of these every five seconds around the world. I actually use this too. I've always worn my hair straight. This year, I'm like, I'm embracing my curls. I heard about the Olaplex. I started applying it to my hair. And what they have is an ingredient that no other product on the market has. And according to them, what this ingredient does is that it refuses the bonds that were broken from styling your hair. As someone that has used this, right. now, let me tell you, it has brought back the curls, brought back the shine to my hair. I agree with you. My sister and I use it as well. We love it on our hair. I love that it works on all hair textures. Okay, Millie, let's move on to the face. Let's talk about this lip stain and this concealer. Yes, yeah, so this is the Sephora Always Red Lip Stain. First of all, I have been using this product for over eight years. I have mm. recommended it to everyone. It's this beautiful, cool tone, like medium red that looks absolutely stunning. And the concealer, because let me tell you, these bags, I got to conceal them away. I want to know about it. Girl, who are you telling? First of all, this is Catrice True Skin Concealer. According to the brand, you have got 18 hours wear, waterproof. It doesn't settle in it. I'm obsessed with this. I love this for going to work or if you're going out, you, know, you don't want to yeah. put on a full base. The concealer is Conce it. Okay. Let's move on to the next product. I am so obsessed with this mist. I thought a mist was something you use in the summer, but you can actually use it in the winter. You can definitely use the mist in the winter. And this one has rose water in it, according to the brand, that has antibacterial properties, anti-inflammatory properties, hydrating properties. Next of it, I love what you're saying, but honestly, it's the smell for me. It's like perfume for your face. Oh my God, yes, honey. You won't want to start spraying. <laughs> This is such a great gift as well. Grab this for the beauty lover and you're like, now we're all familiar with Rihanna. We know her as the superstar, but she also has this brand Fenty, which I'm obsessed with, used it today. This primer, you guys, is incredible. So Millie, I use a little bit of it, just for a little bit, and it really helps to hydrate my face. Just like you were saying in the winter, face yeah. tends to get dry. So before I apply my makeup, I put this on. I love it. It keeps me hydrated during the day. Then when I put my makeup on on top, it keeps me dewy, it keeps me glowing, which sort of gives me that youthful appearance. And I also love how small it is too, right? Isn't this great for travel? First of all, it's great for travel. Now, if you have it on right now, girlfriend, I mean, you are the best because that skin looks glowy, dewy. And it's so low priced, under $20. So I love that. And last but not least, my husband will tell you that he can tell when I'm in a good mood because I love burning a candle. You guys, oh my gosh, Millie, Millie. But I'm the same way. When I'm in a good mood, you know it because I've got the yeah. candles burning. Yes, yes. <laughs> I got to tell you guys, if you haven't checked out the candles, they are sensational. They really range in the scent spectrum. You can go from the musky, this dark amber and oud that I have here, or you can go for gardenia. So even when you have guests over and they walk into your house, or if you're studying, or if you're cooking, or since we're talking about beauty products, when you're getting ready in the morning, light a candle, Millie, it changes up the whole mood. Yes, girl. A good candle, I always say it's kind of life changing, you know? <laughs> Great. Millie, I could have girl chat about beauty products with you all day long. You're amazing, spreading all of that beauty and good energy. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you for having me, beautiful. Bye, Millie. Bye, babe. <laughs> all right, y'all. Now let's run through all the products one more time. First up, we have the Clean Logic Detoxifying Exfoliating Gloves, the Olaplex Number no. 3 Hair Perfector, the Catrice True Skin Concealer, the Sephora Cream Lip Stain, the Heritage Store Rose Water and Glycerin Hydrating Facial Mist, the Fenty Hydrating Primer, and a candle. And just so you know, today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Up next, Jen Fallick has 13 more picks for your home and kitchen to complete our 30 under $30. Don't go away. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. 
Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it just did. The Sunday Sit Down with Willie Geist podcast. It's the conversations you want to have with the people you love to meet. Get your money's worth. Unedited, unfiltered. See ya. Sit down with Willie and listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. I believe, I believe. Every dream, journey, and triumph. And it all starts here. The United States wins gold. Feel the magic every day. The excitement is in the air. At the Winter Olympics, today is where the games begin. Ooh, the answer's calling. You need them most. Ooh, let it go. The Today Show's newest fan. A little Al Roker. I believe, I believe. Every dream, every journey, every triumph. And it all starts here. Let the celebration begin! The excitement is in the air. Is he superhuman? Feel the magic every day. She is a superstar. <laughs> Kayla, we are cheering you on. <laughs> and share every moment with us at the Winter Olympics. Today. 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 Today is where the games begin. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, I'm Jen Fallick. Welcome back to Shop All Day, where we are bringing you 30 products under $30. It's time for some of my better basic favorites that will help you at home, whether it's cooking in the kitchen or getting organized. And who does not love that? And remember, see that QR code at the bottom of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for access to all the items on the show today. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products that we're sharing with you. So let's get started in the kitchen with this milk frother. So I went away for a weekend with my girlfriends and one of them brought a milk frother and it upgraded our morning coffee. I've been wanting one ever since. What I love about this one is that it is so easy to use and it's so simple to travel with. And you can use this for more than just frothing up milk. It becomes like your mini on the go mixer. I also love that this one is battery operated. So that's one less charger for me to remember. And it's pretty enough to store right on top of your kitchen counter. There's a lot of colors to choose from too. It's a really fun little under $30 must have. Now, speaking of coffee, warming coasters are great this time of year. And this one has amazing reviews and really you cannot beat the price. I love that. Pretty much any traditional size mug you can pop on top of here. And once you have one of these on your desk or on your kitchen counter, you don't have to run back to the microwave to reheat your coffee when you're busy and running around. There's a lot of colors to choose from. And I love that it just has a simple, clean design. It looks great on any space and it's super neat on your desktop. And with the tap of a button, this will keep your coffee, your milk, your tea warm all morning long. Now next up, it really isn't a great feeling to invite friends over for a glass of wine and then not be able to open the bottle. This wine bottle opener will cut the seal and open the bottle in seconds with just the push of a button. And the brand says that one full charge will last for up to 30 bottle openings. This thing is good. Now let's move on into the kitchen and cooking. First up, we found a rice cooker under $30. Cooking rice the right way is no simple feat, especially when you're trying to do so many things at once to get dinner on the table. So this Dash rice cooker is a must. This mini size right here is great. While the rice cooks, I get all the other elements together and it just makes it really easy to multitask. And you don't only have to use this for rice. You can cook pasta, quinoa, oatmeal, and more in this little powerhouse. It is so cute, it's compact, and it comes in fun colors. Plus, it's easy to clean. Next, Trader Joe's Everything But The Bagel Sesame Seasoning Blend. It may have originally been made to flavor up your bagels, but it can do 
so much more. We've got sesame seeds, poppy seeds, dried garlic and onion, sea salt flakes, all together mixed up to perfection. It upgrades every basic dish to make it better. I use it on avocado toast, and it is a must for me on hard boiled and scrambled eggs, and it makes basic pasta with butter feel instantly more fancy. This next one has gotta be one of my most favorite finds, perhaps of all time. This is an over the sink drying mat. So this unrolls to fit right on top of your sink, and when it's not in use, it can easily be rolled up and stored. Now the brand says it's heat resistant up to 400 degrees, so it's safe for hot pots and pans too. And I wanted you to see right here on the edge, it has a rubber gripping, so when you put it on your sink, it stays put. While we're speaking of a smartly accessorized sink, this is a must to keep your space neat and your dishwashing supplies in order. So this right here is a silicone kitchen sink organizer, and this tray is gonna hold and help drain all of your washing accessories, from sponges to scrubbers. I put anything that can get a little damp on the bottom into this. The slip resistant design also keeps it in place. This is gonna stay put, and what I love about this also is that it's easy to clean the organizer itself. You can literally wash it by hand with liquid soap and hold it under warm water, or the brand says it can go in the dishwasher as well. It looks modern and sleek, it's substantial and it's high quality for a price that is crazy good. Now while we're on the topic of organization, this battery daddy is going to change the game for you. Storing batteries can really be tricky because there's so many different sizes. This stores and organizes 180 batteries and it sorts them by size. So at a glance, you know exactly what you have on hand. And it's sturdy, easy to carry with you. It's got the handle and the clear top lets you know what you're missing. Now we're moving on to some genius better basics that you're gonna to wanna to add to your closet or mudroom stat. These right here are boot rescue wipes. So winter weather can be really, really harsh on our footwear. So what's great about these is that all you do is you pull out this little wipe you can see right here, so simple to use. The all natural formula is great to clean leather, suede, rubber, any sort of fabric like that. Also great for nubuck boots. The company really recommends when you can wipe it down as soon as you notice a spot, that's gonna keep your shoes looking fresh. So throwing these in your purse, it's a no brainer. Let's move next to the nighttime routine and a couple of products that are affordable and super useful. Starting with these headlamp flashlights. My girls and I love wearing these for reading in bed with a bright light that literally just shines directly where you need it to. The sizing is adjustable too, so it fits really nicely on their little heads and on my big old head. And when my kids have to run to the bathroom mid-story, we no longer need to turn on every light, wake everyone up. With this on their heads, they can find their way. For adults, this is so great for late night reading. When your significant other is asleep, you won't disrupt anyone else in the room. Also, you can adjust the tilt for a custom fit, and this one has seven light modes to choose from as well. Now, this is a Sherpa fleece throw blanket. It feels super luxe and cozy, but the price is so right. This is under $30. There are many colors to choose from. There's neutrals, there's statement shades, and it's the perfect wrap for a chilly winter night. I love that it's cozy, but it doesn't feel heavy. Throw it in the wash when you need, and it is good as new. So you've got this soft side over here, give you the color, and then this fluffy Sherpa. It is really delicious. And finally, we've got a few items for your desk that, you guessed it, are all under $30 starting with this acrylic desk organizer. And I love acrylic accessories because they blend in with your space and they corral clutter without being distracting. This one here has an easy see-through design. So this way it's simple to find whatever you're looking for. And the spinning design means that nothing is ever hidden from view. A quick turn of this chic gold handle is really all you need to do to have easy access to all your office essentials. Now, whether you're still working from home or you're back in the office, this USB rechargeable desktop cleaner magically makes crumbs and dust disappear so your workspace looks neat and tidy all the time. It also will clean the dust out from between your keyboard keys and the ergonomic design makes it really easy to use. You just press the switch right under your fingertip and you glide it across your desk just like you would a mouse on your computer. All you gotta do to clean it out, you just unscrew the top and the bottom, you run a cleaning brush that comes with it right through it, and it's good as new. Let's go through these products one more time, and remember, you can use a QR code to get instant access to all these items. We've got the milk frother, the coffee mug warmer, the wine opener, the dash rice cooker, 
the Trader Joe's Everything But The Bagel Seasoning Blend, the Over The Sink Dry Mat, the Silicone Kitchen Sink Organizer, the Battery Daddy, the Boot Rusty Wipes, the Headlamp Flashlight, the Sherpa Fleece Throw Blanket, the Acrylic Desk Organizer, and the Desktop Vacuum Cleaner. And that's a wrap on all of your better basics and for our show. It has been so much fun showing you our favorites. Tune in next Thursday for another episode of Shop Today with Jill Martin. Christmas, there's usually a lot of overindulging, so you may want to lighten things up. Okay, so why not go vegan at times? That's, that's the name of the new cookbook from New York Times bestselling author Jessica Seinfeld, and it's chock full of recipes that are so simple and delicious, you may not miss the meat. Jessica's here. You guys have a real connection, the well, two of you. We're sort of related. Right. Yeah. Or we're going to be related. Right. How? Well, her cat. Our, our cats are engaged. Well, her not, cat, Javier. What? Oh, look. Oh, wait, he's on the left. Have yours oh, on wait, the left. Oh, y'all actually did an engagement photo. Well, that's wait. not Eleanor on the oh, right. Oh, but no. it looks like Eleanor. Well, no, COVID. Yeah, no. Actually, Eleanor looks more like Javier. Okay, I'm but, confused. Oh, Who's Javier's cat on the left. Is that's my Marie cat on the left. Okay. My cat Javier is marrying Eleanor. Barbara's cat. Barbara's cat. Your sister's my sister's cat. cat. Yeah, they're engaged. Uh, you know, I just want to say. Why is there a love between the two of them? They just aren't. Why not? Okay. Look at them. Okay. What do they Look have in common? Them. Javier's on the right. Eleanor's on the left. How yes. did they meet? She's even? a little rough and tumble in yeah. that picture. Yeah, she really is. <laughs> how, did now, they, how did they meet? They met online. They met online. You know what? This is not going to work out well. Wait, but Jessica, honestly, we just we couldn't let you go without getting you a little. A wedding dress for Eleanor and a little tuxedo oh, for Javier. Oh, so sweet. Okay. Oh well, this is Are a big announcement. Yeah, yes, this is a big this announcement. Is, and if you all want a venue for the wedding, <laughs> yeah. you can come here. Do you do weddings? Yeah, we do pet Remember weddings. Remember weddings on the plaza? We've yes. never done a pet wedding. Let's do it. A cat <laughs> no, wedding. We have okay. to ask you, is okay. Javier vegan? Um, no, okay. he's not vegan. Okay. Um, he's <laughs> vegan at times, but we're, we're working on him. He's the hardest one in the family. All right. What, what inspired this? Is it just because people like to be vegan for a little while, but they don't want to commit? No, I think they feel like they are going to fail. Oh, and oh, oh, I oh. hate that word failure around food. I think there should be no shame yeah. associated with food. Well, that's why we like the at times. This is just yes. for when you feel like stepping it up a little. And actually, Hoda thinks you wrote this book for her because she was vegan for two days. Oh. That, it was really great. Yeah. I felt good during those two yeah. days. Well, that's so, the point. If you yeah. feel really See? great, you keep doing something. Okay, so Jessica. sloppy Joe's. I'm here jo to make it easy okay. for you. Sloppy Joe's. Sloppy Joe's. We have these for meat. dinner. Yeah, okay. and that is also the point. Get people eating the foods they already like. Just make them vegan. Okay. okay. And so let's let's do this one really quick because okay. I think we took up a lot of time Sorry. in this segment. So well, yes. large Javier. top here with our red pepper. We're gonna throw it in the food processor. Yum. Jenna, do you like to use a food um, processor? Sure. Okay. No, I don't pulse that. Okay. Pulse it a couple times. So it's the same size, it's evenly topped. This look how beautiful. It is. Beautiful. It's all, it's all here. Yep. And sauteed. What do you add in there? This is onions. This. What's this in is here that. is that. Is, no oil or anything. Yeah. Olive oil, okay. onion, garlic and our peppers that okay. we just chopped. Okay. Now we're going to put in our cauliflower. Oh, yeah. Cauliflower. Yeah, so you we're going to cook you, did this. Did you pulse, for, pulse that yep. in the thing too? Yeah, okay. so okay. it's all done in your food processor. We're going to cook this put for six in. minutes. Yes. And this, what kind of beans are those? These are cannellini beans, yeah. but you can use chickpeas or you can use red kidney beans. And, and then, then we're going to make adding, our sauce, but oh. let's make it over here so we okay. have something to do in okay. this segment. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, okay. This is apple cider vinegar. I this didn't is... know you could actually cook with that. I just like swallow it kind of disgustingly. Oh, you do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, people say you're supposed to. For allergies. Know. Yeah. And Why what... don't you put the water in, Jenna? Okay. This that is can salt. Do it. <laughs> Am I doing okay? You're doing great. <laughs> Wait, what was all those spices you're dumping? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now you want to talk about it. Okay. This is a little cayenne pepper, chili powder, salt, pepper. Yeah. Okay. Um, we put brown sugar, yeah. tomato oh, paste, sweet, water, yeah. apple cider vinegar. We're going to mix with that. It? You put uh, it in here? Yeah. Do you want to mix this? Sure. They told me not to give you a knife. That was my instruction. <laughs> Did they? So. Maybe I'll take that wedding dress back. The cat wedding could be off. Let's put okay, this so over you here. Swirl it around and then yeah. you just dump and it right dump on top of that. And dump that in there. And here are our is nice, this what it pretty. Looks like? That is what it looks oh, like. I mean, it is delicious. It's, so it is actually delicious. I'm coming over here to bring And this is our bread bun is. that's um, been toasted with some olive oil in a skillet. Is that good? Yes, yeah, gorgeous. Let's okay. put some pickles on yeah. there. Pickles. Is it yummy? Delicious. The pickles are the best part. Mm -hmm. Bread and butter I agree. pickles. Oh. What do you do? I don't. Not sweet, right? Those are sweet these. and they're delicious. No. <laughs> okay, well, that's sweet. a great idea, actually. Oh. Somebody on my Instagram mm -hmm. said put some vegan cheddar cheese on that oh. and then you're good. And I thought that was a great uh -huh. idea. 
And here you go. Okay, now, mm. does, is, is your family into these? My family's on really board. Dumb. It's weird. Actually, my son last night, Julian, said, you don't even need to tell me anymore that things are vegan, because I think they're sick of getting surprised, because I'm like, that's vegan. <laughs> and they're like, okay. Yeah, it's spicy and way, delicious. Now, what, what are these real quick? These are, uh -huh. if you have a person in your life who's like, I'm never, I will never eat vegan food, serve them these. What these are that? peanut butter bars. And they are so delicious. I made them last night. This has a graham cracker crust. Look at this. Crust. Okay. Last night I made them and with a chocolate wafer crust. And this doesn't have any butter crust. or anything? No, it has um, coconut cream, you know peanut butter. Oh my god. Isn't that great? But how is that possible? Oh my god. I know. Mm -mm. Those are in my book, Vegan at Times. Are those that good? is a good, showstopper. That yep. is a bad, but so is this. I know, but oh. this. Mm. Anyway. I'm so happy. But we're not, we're just All right, we love eating. cats, we love vegan food, yeah. we love oh my you. God, this Tune in to our cat wedding. Yes, seriously. Details, really TBD. Yeah, oh, wait, you have to serve this as the cat cake. Yes, okay. Right, with like a little catnip. Okay. All right, <laughs> <laughs> for these recipes, head to today.com slash food. Three chefs embracing a growing food movement. NBC News correspondent Savannah Sellers is always <laughs> on top of the trends. <laughs> she found out about three new restaurants here in New York City where you won't find meat on the menu. That's right, not meat, not cheese, they're vegan wow. actually. How about Mexican, Italian, and soul food restaurants, all plant-based, all run by women of color, all under 30. Mm. As you'll see, these three executive chefs are ready to challenge your taste buds. It's a sisterhood of restaurants with a purpose, run by young women, finding inspiration in their own stories. Chef Zyla Cadillo taps into her Mexican heritage to create her cuisine. My restaurant is Etheria. It is a mezcal bar with vegan-inspired Mexican dishes. Chef Shanari Freeman leans into her southern roots for recipes. My restaurant is called Cadence. It is southern soul food, plant-based focus. And Chef Amara Garib, daughter of an Ecuadorian mother and an Egyptian father, gets her inspiration from her father, who operated a pizza parlor. My restaurant is called Soda Club. It's a wine bar and it's plant-based uh, Italian fresh pasta. Did you catch this detail? All three skipped the animal products, but not the flavor. Look, I have to say, when you hear Italian food, when you hear Mexican food, when you hear soul food, I mean, there's a lot of cheese in those. There's a lot of meat in those. I'm Mexican. I grew up with my mom making Mexican food. How is it to make these particular types of food plant-based. For soul food, one thing you have to definitely focus on is the flavor profile. So just playing around with textures a lot, uh, different flavors, cooking techniques. I think the Italian food, you just stick with fresh pasta, you can't go wrong. Mexican people are indigenous people, and a lot of our food is from nature and from the gum. So I feel like it easily translated to being vegan. Raise your hand if you're a vegan. Okay, so Amira, you're not. What was this process like? I mean, were you like missing the cheese at all on top of a pasta or no? It's really easy to just cover something in cheese and it's delicious. <laughs> and then it tastes good. <laughs> yeah. It was more challenging because I was just trying to find substitutes to make it more traditional, but not traditional at the same time. Yeah. We also have a group chat where one of us will be like, this is a whack cheese, don't use it. Or this yeah. is a really good one, you should try it out, <laughs> stuff like that. You're all under 30 and you have the titles of executive chef at restaurants in New York City. I mean, how cool is that? It's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> How's this been to go through together? Better than going alone. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Because we're able to learn a lot from each other mm. um, and also learn a lot about ourselves, how we cook, and how to run restaurants. Their boss had full faith they could do just that. Ravi Darasi, founder and CEO of Overthrow Hospitality, who owns all the restaurants, decided to give them a shot at starting their own culinary concepts when they were working at the company in different positions. Was it this purposeful decision to give three women of color this opportunity to be executive chefs of New York City restaurants? I think subconsciously intentional, mm. if that makes sense. Mm. They were already in the company and the best suited for these positions. Over 65% of our 300 some odd employees were women and people of color. So we made the very clear decision to put more people of color in places of authority. So as they're hiring, they see through the lens of their selves. Of course, a taste test had to be part of this assignment to see how they stand up to the real thing. First, plant-based Italian from the Soda Club. So where should I start? Definitely with the ravioli. With the ravioli, okay. That's my favorite, yeah. That is amazing. You good? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm having a moment. Next, vegan-inspired Mexican food from Eteria. The mango salsa looks delicious. It is so good. Oh my goodness. 
And finally, I had to try a dish getting rave reviews, fried lasagna, a soul food favorite at Cadence. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm blown away. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> I know. Right now, all three women say they come up with these innovative recipes by doing their research, which really just means getting to go out to eat a lot. And oh, they all I, say I'm they're in. more focused on the flavor and mm -hmm. the texture rather than just making sure that it mimics non-vegan food. And I have to say, when I was eating that, it's not like I was eating vegan dishes. I was just eating great food. In the City of Angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. I believe, I believe. Every dream, journey, and triumph. And it all starts here. United States, let's go! Feel the magic every day. The excitement is in the air. At the Winter Olympics, today is where the games begin. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. This morning on Today Food, one of our favorites, Katie Lee Beagle. That's right. She is Hi. out with a new Hi. cookbook. It's not complicated. All of the recipes, simple, made with real ingredients that you probably already have in your house. Mm -hmm. Where's the baby? Where's the baby? Where's the baby? You want to see the baby? It's all about the baby, right? Forget the book. Oh, wait. Okay, it's good. Oh, wait. Hey. 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 Yes. What we're talking yes. about. Where's Here Iris? Is. Oh. Oh. Iris. Katie Lee, do you just love being a mama? It looks like you were born oh my for gosh. it. Oh. I love being this baby's mom more than anything in the world. Oh, I mean, she's, she's just so, so sweet and cuddly. She's very well fed, if you can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> <She's laughs> of course she is. <laughs> and we should point out, Katie Lee, that we're saying Katie, Katie Lee Beagle yes. is new to all yes. of us here at the show. Tell us. That's right. I, I am now a beagle. Um, <laughs> I added my husband's name because I thought our family should all have the same last name. Oh, so, well, congratulations. Mom. Well, congratulations. <laughs> so there's the, there's the family you. photo. Katie, you're, you know, I'm you, gonna, you, you got your fourth go cookbook here. Uh, yeah, you which, can what, hand what, off, you want to hand off your baby? Yeah, no, but listen. <laughs> I'm going to give her to grandma. Grandma's okay. sitting here. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I wondered right, like ahead, how you kind of came, you know, what was the, you know, like the motivation behind cookbook number four, but as you're holding the baby, I mean, you must want to do like a baby cookbook too. <laughs> I know next has to be baby food. Mm -hmm. But really with this, I felt like life's complicated enough. Your food shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. I want to make recipes that are easy and fast with everything that I have in my pantry. I'm not looking for a laundry list of ingredients. So these are easy. You can get them on your table and they taste great. And so that's gonna make two, you're going to make two uh, uh, pasta dishes that are uh, vegetarian friendly. Oh, I love that. <laughs> baby. Vegetarian friendly, right? <laughs> you, you guys like eating a little meatless meals in there in your house? Yeah, we like doing our meatless Mondays, but we also love our burgers and steaks. So it's just about a balance. So I've got here for you just a big old bowl of mushroom bolognese. It's a super mm. simple. Um, with this, you just put a variety of mushrooms into a food processor, saute them up with onions and garlic and tomato and red wine and let it simmer. And it's super yummy. It's a good one to have in the fridge and just kind of pick on. Now I'm going to take you over here and we're going to make a spinach artichoke pasta. So yeah. this is a great creamy pasta. Think about spinach artichoke dip and add pasta to it and melted cheese. Oh, so wow. what could be bad about that? So I'm just gonna add some olive oil to my pan. And this is a recipe that was actually my husband Ryan's idea when we were doing quarantine because it was all stuff that we had. So mm -hmm. I've got my garlic going in the pan. 
I'm going to add to it a can of artichoke hearts. Mm, I love artichoke yeah, hearts. Yeah, me too. And then I've got some frozen spinach that I thawed and squeezed all the water out of it. Mm-hmm. You could also use fresh. Just cook it down. It's really important to squeeze that water out. And I've got a little bit of oregano mm-hmm. or Italian seasoning. Mm-hmm. You can add a little pinch of crushed red pepper to it mm-hmm. to get a little bit of heat. And you just want to let this cook for a couple of minutes. Let the flavors bloom of that garlic and the seasoning. And then to this, I'm going to add some cream cheese. So this is oh, going to make it really rich dressing. and creamy. Mm-hmm. And you can also substitute a light cream cheese if you want to lighten this up, or you can nah. put a little Greek yogurt in it. <laughs> <laughs> or just go for it. Yeah. Go for it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Think about, you know, what you're eating at another meal. I'm going to add a little bit of the pasta water to it. Mm, and this helps thin out the sauce, but it also helps hold everything together because it's got that pasta starch in there. We've seasoned our water so that it has a nice flavor to it. And then you add your pasta to it. So I'm using a rigatoni. Penne would work great as well. When I'm doing these pasta bakes, I really like to use a short pasta. And just have it all. Oh, oh, Iris loves it. Iris, Iris loves it. Iris. <laughs> Iris says, yeah, mommy, I'll take that. It wasn't a binky in her mouth. It was a rigatoni. (laughs) (laughs) She's my kid, right? She likes to eat. All right. So you let that cook till it gets nice Mm -hmm. and creamy. Mm. Top it with cheese. I've got just shredded mozzarella here. Oh, my gosh. Like Parmesan cheese. We're going to have to put the rest on the website. All right, Katie Lee, Beagle, we love you. Oh, well, let's Wait, look let's at it as you take it out of the oven. Take a look. Oh. I'll just do the sell here while you do it. Yeah. Today.com slash food yeah. if you want to enjoy yes. that. And yeah. congrats on the book, Katie. It's not complicated. It certainly piece. isn't. We appreciate you. <laughs> The City of Angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon. And by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it's just the What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? I believe, I believe. Every dream, journey, and triumph. And it all starts here. The United States, let's go! Feel the magic every day. The excitement is in the air. At the Winter Olympics, today is where the games begin. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Joined by one of our favorite chefs, hey. our Bobby Flay. That's right. He's got a new book out next week called Beat Bobby Flay. Conquer the kitchen with 100-plus battle-tested oh. recipes. Oh. Yeah, this morning, Bobby's teaching us how to win in the kitchen with one of his all-time favorite dishes. Bobby, just when you think you know everything about chili, you're going to do something. Is it a secret ingredient? Is it like, are you going to add some coffee grinds to it? Or are you going to, what are you doing? You're just taking the meat out? You're robbing us? Well, I, I, it is a vegetarian dish, but Carson, you have to understand, first of all, on Beef Bobby Flay, I don't get to decide what the signature dish that we're cooking is. It's the other chef. Oh, that's right. So I got challenged to vegetable chili, and also my girlfriend doesn't eat meat, so, you know, I got to adjust. Smart so man. how do you make it good? Works. Smart man. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. So come on over. So um, I'm going to start by making the base of the chili 
Every, I always say everything good starts with onions and garlic. So we're going to start with some onions and garlic and then some tomatoes as well. And, of course, you need to bring some spices into the game. And, Bobby, so well, who's like your girlfriend? <laughs> no, uh, you buried the lead. I, I, wow. Just kidding. I, I, I knew you were going to go there. Yeah. I knew yeah. you were going to go there. Well, you brought it up. Uh, she will re- she's going to rename uh, Nameless for now. Okay. But, but okay. thanks for asking. I'm just going to Google it. I'll have it by the end of the oh. segment. Wow. <laughs> All right. So the go chili ahead. went when right out the, the window. In? Sure did. Nothing remains nameless, Where'd you Bobby. Meet? It's How'd 2021. You How'd you guys meet? <laughs> Anyway, so then you add then you add a dark beer to the uh, uh-huh. to the chili, which yeah. is one of those secret ingredients, right? And then this becomes the base of it. Now, Carson was asking, like, you know, you rob us of the meat, but you can use things that are veg that are vegetables that actually wow. give us the uh, the texture. Very of the attractive. Meat, meat so light. We're, so we're going to very we're going to Carson uh, founder. Carson founder on the gonna, internet. We're not I will gonna not say, say it out loud. Name, but we he did. Very, but very impressive. No, he didn't. He did. No he did. Yeah. So okay. Vegan so or we vegetarian? Have, uh, <laughs> no. Veg- you really are dating have- up, Bobby. You are really wow. dating up. You are a lucky wow. man. All right. So anyway, this guy went off the rails. Mix, what what vegetables are you using there, Bobby, to replace so the meat? Thank you so much, Al. Thank you so much. So we have uh, we wow. have eggplant and portobello mushrooms Ooh. because they they have that sort of meaty texture. Mm-hmm. We're gonna add that to the to the chili as well. And we're going to let this cook for a little while. And then basically what happens is you have the base of the chili, and it mm-hmm. looks and feels like chili. It tastes like chili, but it's completely meatless. And, and then the thing I love about chili is that it becomes like this canvas for all these, like, really cool garnishes that you can put on top, which is really the key, oh, right? Nice mm-hmm. So Ooh, That's beautiful. We have some yogurt that uh, has a little bit of uh, uh, shishito peppers in it and some lime juice. Mm-hmm. We want that nice cooling effect. And then I have some avocados in here with some um, with some diced red onions mm-hmm. and some chilies. I'm going to put some avocado mm. on top. It's almost like uh, the chili becomes a vehicle for all these cool things that you want to eat. A, little, a, a few tortilla chips with some crunch. Mm. you got to make sure you have that crunch right. going. Hey, Bobby, does, it, does the chili Mexican take cheese. less time because it's meat-based, I mean vegetable-based, than, yeah. than a meat-based one would? It does, Al, because, you know, if you're cooking something like eggplant or portobello mushrooms, it's going to uh, it's going to cook a lot quicker. You just want to make sure that the mushrooms, then the eggplant Mm -hmm. cook all the way through because then it absorbs all the flavor from the base of the chili itself. You want to cook at that dark beer. You want to get some of that earthiness as well. And uh, and then, you know, you you just you you start to garnish it a little bit of lime zest on top. So you have some acidity, you have some spiciness, you have a little sweetness, mm. all the good things, and it's a uh, it's a very warming dish. I have to say, like when I first said when I first heard that I had to make vegetable chili mm-hmm. on beef Bobby Flay, I was kind of bummed out because mm-hmm. right. you know I am I am a meat eater, and um, but I have to say like the eggplant and the mushrooms do a great job Ooh. of substituting yeah. it. And of course, it's a little bit healthier. I mean, people are eating a lot more vegetables. I was going to say, are, are plant ba- is plant based having its moment now, Bobby? Oh, it's unbelievable. You know, as a chef. We constantly have to adjust to uh, to the trends of the way people are eating. And I will say one thing. People are eating healthier and healthier, and I don't think that's ever going to go in mm-hmm. reverse. I think it's only going to keep going in that direction. Bobby. So we have to really get very comfortable with cooking vegetables in lots of different ways. Yeah, what did your girlfriend say when she tried that oh, first wow. bite? I was just curious. <laughs> He's trying to help you here. Uh, trying well, to help what, a brother out. So what, what did she say? Who? Um... You know what? I haven't made this for her yet, to be perfectly honest. Oh. But you know, it's it's on the dock. Well, it's been it's been it's been the summer now. Now you know it's getting a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you're right. Um, well, is she there right now? You told her to step on in. <laughs> no, she's not here. But, but yeah, yeah, yeah. thanks so much for asking. You're the best. Kidding. Bobby, we love you so much. Does this she, is so fun to tease you. you. Does she have a key to the elevator? <laughs> <laughs> what else is in your book? We have a couple seconds. What other kind of recipes? Are they all vegetarian? Uh, well, you know, th- there's all kinds of things, from like piri piri chicken to shrimp and grits. Oh. Um, there's some great desserts like a spiced chocolate pudding, um, eggplant rollatini. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, um, Salisbury steak. There's, there's really classic home style dishes. Mm-hmm. Cool. And then there's a couple of things in that are a little bit fancier. But it's a you know, if, if you're a fan of the show, I mean, uh, Al's been on the show a couple of times. Um, it's such a fun show, and um, we've, we, we've shot over 500 episodes. Jeez. Wow. Cool. And, and you've only uh, lost so twice. So obviously it's they're amazing. not all in this yeah. book. This is volume one, Our, so oh, hopefully wow. there'll yeah. be more volumes. It's a terrific right. book. Thank you, Bobby. It's a great show. It's a great book. Thank, Thank you, Bobby. Bobby. Good luck Bye. with the relationship. You guys are the best. <laughs> We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, 
Download the NBC News app. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. The Sunday Sit Down with Willie Geist podcast. It's the conversations you want to have with the people you'd love to meet. Get your money's worth. Unedited, unfiltered. See ya. Sit down with Willie and listen wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast, free wherever you get your podcasts. If you're in the kitchen and you've got mac and cheese lovers in your house, this is a recipe for you. Vegan chef and cookbook author Chloe Coscarelli created a creamy and craveable plant-based pasta that's good for your health. It's good for the earth. First of all, you're cute as a button. We, can't even, we cannot handle your cuteness. Okay, we're going to begin there. How are you? Good morning, Hoda and Jenna. Do you guys ever feel like eating a comforting bowl of creamy mac and cheese, but you still want to get your greens? So it's Earth Day. We can have both. We're making mac and greens, and it's so easy. This is going to come together in minutes. Mac and greens is such a good idea, yes. and this is good for the Earth because we're not. We're, it's dairy free. Yes. It's meat free. Um, it's yeah. Exactly. There's no cheese, no dairy. Tons of greens, antioxidants, vitamins. So we're going to start by just boiling our pasta. I like to use a nice shell or elbow for mac and cheese. You could use any shape. You could also use gluten free. Um, and I like to salt the um, pasta water because this is really your only chance to flavor the actual pasta. Okay. And give that a nice stir, and we're going to want a nice al dente noodle. Mmm, looks so great. All Yummy. right, let's get started on the sauce. It's so simple. So we're going to start with a blender. Since we're not using any dairy, we're going to have a cup of water. We're adding a cup of raw cashews. Okay. This is going to make our nice creamy texture and base. We're going to blend that up. And if you don't have um, a high powered blender, you can just soak the cashew nuts overnight to soften them a bit mm. and blend that up into a nice silky cream sauce. Okay. Wow. So, yummy. Then I like to move to the food processor. This preserves a little bit of texture. We've got five ounces of fresh spinach in here. You can use a bag from the grocery store. You can also shop local if you can from farmer's market. We're adding parsley. This is a super green dish. I don't measure a cup of parsley. I just like to rip it straight from the bunch like that. Mm -hmm. I figure a handful is about a cup. And stems are okay. Shuffling. This is Earth Day. We're not going to waste. I then like to add a quarter cup of olive oil. Mm, okay. And you could use any mild oil. You could use coconut oil or any oil that you have on hand. A teaspoon and a half of salt and three garlic cloves. An Italian love to add garlic into mac and cheese. And then we're going to just blend that up. Wow. That is good. That looks good for you. And you'll see the greens, they're fresh. We're not even cooking them, which is great. We're going to preserve all of those vitamins. Oh, and, and then we're going to add in our cashew cream sauce. Yeah. So what gives it the cheesy flavor? Is it the, the cashew? cashew? Really? It's the garlic. It's the, oh. the creaminess from the cashew. And it's a really mellow, mild, just delicious, comforting dish. Mm -hmm. um, I like to eat this all the time. Mm. I want that. Done. Was that not the easiest it um, Simple sauce and ever? delicious. <laughs> and I think for so people with gonna... lactose issues, too. Yeah, brilliant. Exactly. It's all plant-based and dairy-free, which is good for the earth and good for good for you. And also, you can just eat more of it and feel really light. Um, I'm going to go ahead and toss this with my hot drained pasta. Mm. I mean, so easy. It looks so simple. And once it So just... you don't even warm up the, the, the sauce uh, isn't warm, right? It's the cashew... Warm. Once you just hit it with the warm pasta, it kind of melts uh -huh. in, and you can hear it. It sounds like mac and cheese. It's very creamy and smooth. And then I'm gonna serve some up. Mm. So you're really getting a ton of greens, but you get to eat them 
on pasta. Actually, when I first made this dish, I wanted to call it chlorophyll max because it was like so much <laughs> antioxidants and vitamins. My mom said that sounded really weird. So we went with mac and greens. So I'm going to then, I like to top it with some chili flakes. Oh, that's a good one. And black pepper. And there we have it. That's our mac and greens. It's so, so easy. Any it looks, questions? It looks so good. Well, because you have so much extra, what if we put some in the fridge and we wanted to have it the next day? How, how do you reheat Great it? Great idea. So I actually like to freeze it. Um, just like this, you can take take your big batch, you can throw it in the freezer, and then just um, heat it over stovetop, and it, it um, reconstitutes perfectly. You can add a little bit of water. You can eat your leftovers either cold, kind of like a pasta salad, or you can eat them heated up. So this is a really nice, flexible dish, a great thing to make um, in the week yes. and enjoy and as Chloe, the days go by. We <laughs> love how you hid the veggies for kids. Yeah, too. that's it's so delicious. smart. Thank you, Chloe. You can make this recipe at home. Go to today.com slash food. Check one, two, one, two, oh, one, two. How you doing? Wait. What? No, don't do that, Wait, Hoda. How what? you doing today? Come on. You good? Come on, I got my dog ears going on. Hey, the book. Come, come on. Come on. A dog ear in the book. Oh, do you, you're enjoying it so far? Loving it. Oh, Sounds man. like it Thank was like so it's much. it was as if you just spoke and it all came out on the pages. It did. It, I, I mean, we're living crazy faith right now. So we're we're excited. I got to tell you, I am over the moon to be sitting with you. I'm over the moon to be making some space with you. Oh, this is awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I mean, me. first of all, welcome back to uh, the planet Earth. I know you shut <laughs> down, you shut your phone down. You you took a break from all things yeah. media, all Everything. things phone. Yeah. I mean, this is an important place, I think, to begin, Pastor, because so many of us are locked in. Tell me what your big revelation was by just this simple act of putting all phone social media away. Yeah, I think if I could sum it up in one word, the word is margin. And I, I think about like the greatest things I've ever did or ever done they came in the margin. It didn't come when I was trying to figure it out. It didn't come mm. when I was trying to make it happen. It came when I made space. And it's <laughs> so amazing that the title of this podcast has to do with making space. It's, it's I mean, when you look at my life story, um, when, I, when I met you before, we were talking about uh, my last book, my first book, mm -hmm. Relationship Goals. It went number one New York Times bestseller, first book, crazy response helping tons of people but that message came when i came off of a month unplugged from all social media you know, all internet and it blew up and i just feel like there's something that happens when you get revelation when you get ideas and when you get um um new thoughts when there's margin and so this year i did it um bigger than i've ever done before i took a, a hundred days and I was gone. I was out of here. We had a new what, baby. Can, wait, oh, I want to hear about the babe. But can I just tell you something? <laughs> Some people would say, you know what would happen? If I took off from my whatever, I would lose my competitive edge. People no. would be sprinting past me. I took a break and I came back and the world went on without me and left me behind. That's false. And what it, it really does is it puts you on a trajectory of unhealth that one day you're going to look up and have all of these things and hate your life. See, what ends up happening is yeah. when you don't stop to enjoy what has happened, to be able to look at all of the amazing miracles that are your life, to enjoy the children that you work so hard for, when you do it, you'll look up and you'll run on that motor for 20, 30, 40 years, and then look up and not enjoy what you've built. Yeah. You'll, you'll get off of this treadmill and be like, I've been running so hard to go nowhere. And what happens when you take a break, or from my beliefs, a sabbatical, yeah. or a time of extended um, um, withdrawing, I, I, I learned from the greatest leader I believe that ever lived was Jesus. When you just study him from a historical and a leadership um, standpoint, he's doing all of these miracles all around the world. But like after these feeding 5,000 and doing all of this stuff, it says, and he withdrew often. He withdrew. And I'm thinking about yeah. like, if you're like 
claiming to be the son of God on the earth. Like, why in the world would you have to withdraw? Like, right. why in the world would you have? But I believe there is something that happens in solitude that that makes you humble. And for anybody that would say, like, you know what I'm saying, they passed me by and this yeah, and all that yeah. other stuff, you don't realize that each one of us come to this earth with a lane that we're supposed to run in. And it doesn't matter what anybody else is doing. What's for you is for you if you can stay healthy enough to run in that lane. And every time that I take this break or make space, what it does is it gives opportunity for me to recenter, for me to refocus and me to remember who I am, why I am, and who I'm created to help. You get messages. You said you don't when you don't seek it out, it comes to you. When you make yeah. space, it comes. How does it like? How does it come to you? How do the messages? How do you receive them? So something that's a practical practice for me every day is I have what I call quiet time where I do meditation, prayer, I read scriptures, and um, I write down the things that I feel strongly impressed on my heart. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's things like, go take your wife on a special date, like, and I just <laughs> feel like impressed to do that. And other times it's like, hey, pray for that family, or um, uh, go give to that person, or read this scripture over and over and over and over again. And I just follow those promptings. You know the crazy thing, Hoda, huh. is people aren't still enough or silent enough to even listen to themselves, to be able to see how they're feeling, to be able to see what what um, is being told to them by the people they love and by the, the, the things that are speaking to them. And when I make that space every day, mm -hmm. it's so crazy that one hour out of 24 hours yeah. can begin to set the trajectory for my life, my family, and miracles to happen in my life that um, really make me feel like, I'm just a part of something that's <laughs> way bigger than me. And I'm just grateful that I get to play a small part. You know what's funny? It's so funny you're saying this because lately in the mornings, I, I always write in, in a journal and usually it's gratitude journal, three things. But lately I've just been writing like what's on my heart. It's a conversation I'll have with God by myself in the morning. Yeah. And for me in the morning, I get up at, I'm a 3.30 a.m. get up person to get to work. But there's even space then, like yeah. that 20 minutes, because I try to carve it out. And yeah. sometimes that's all it is. And I'm wondering, like, what's a, what am I supposed to be doing today? How am I supposed to be of service? Then I, the next morning I'll reflect, I'll say, did I do, did I carry out those things that I felt like I should have that day? Yeah. But boy, and that's 20 minutes at 3.30 in the morning. That's Come it. On. That's that's what it was. And, and it, it doesn't matter yes. what the time is. It's that you set intention for that time. Yeah. And, and I think that's one thing that um, in today's society, we let media, social media, uh, our schedules, our mm -hmm. children, we, we're ran by all of the things and we have not taken charge and prioritized the things that actually help us be healthy and whole and present to the moment. And for me, that's hard for me to say, like I even saying this to you yeah. right now, I sound like a completely different person <laughs> than I was three years ago because I found that my motor of running and going and making things happen and grinding and all of these words we we have uh, um, idolized in 2021, yeah. you know what I'm saying? All of those things were coming from, and listen to me say this, okay. an unhealthy place from my childhood. Huh. And I was trying to outrun insignificance huh. and insecurity from something that was so long ago. And now it's the thing people look at me as like, man, that guy has a crazy, I mean, he, he's always going and everything works. And what I was really doing was running from pain. And it came out looking wow. like so much drive, but it actually was a, a an unhealthy route that I was trying to so. um, compensate for. And so when I see people that are so driven and can't take a break and ha and think it's proud to have vacation days they didn't use in this year and all this other stuff, it's a telltale sign that there may be something unhealthy in the past that they're actually trying to work and run their way out of. Boy, that's very 
very that's loaded. profound. That's I want to, I need to sit in this. <laughs> I need to make space for that comment. But you are so right because people are like, I only need five hours of sleep. I worked Saturdays. High five, high five. So one of the other things I love that you do that I try to steal because you have so <laughs> many good things. And I want to get into the background of your life, but I just want to get a couple of nuggets before we go there, which is Let's go. you set intentions for your yeah. relationship with your wife, yeah. for your relationship with your kids, for your job. Okay, help me because I want to do this. So what? how do you do it? What are you doing? How are you improving your relationship with your kids, your wife, your job? What do you do? I think the first thing that you have to understand is when you say what you desire, mm -hmm. it begins to move your life in that direction. And most people are scared to even say what they're hoping for. Mm -hmm. They're scared to even say like, you know what? I hope to be working a job that I have time for my family. Mm -hmm. Like they won't even say that. Mm -hmm. And what I've designed my life around is being voice activated, steeped in my faith. And that's why I wrote the book, Crazy mm -hmm. Faith. That's why I've, I've, I've started to try to give away the plays that I've used. And so the first thing I did honestly is got a vision and wrote the vision down and made it plain. And, and I d believe that a lot of people- Give me an example. Give me an example. Okay, like, like very basic. Like I will date my wife for the rest of my life. <laughs> I said that out loud, but it wasn't enough to say it. I had to write it down. And I had to write it down to the point where it became written down in my calendar every week. So every Tuesday night, we have a babysitter, no matter what happens, and I am going to date my wife. We're going to go to the movies. We're going to go on a walk. We're going to go swimming. We're going to do something together because there's no way that I can commit my life to all of these other things and then, by the way, kind of make my wife fit into the picture. Mm -hmm. And when I wrote it down, when I said it out loud, when I let my intention be known and I put that vision down on paper, mm. it's been two and a half years and every week we've had a date night, mm. some weeks twice. And me and her are closer today than we've ever been. That's my high school sweetheart. I met her when I was 15 years old and we've been married 11 years. We got four kids. We run a bunch of businesses together, but it did not happen by accident. Right. I do not let anybody come in between what I say and what I do so that I can get the end result that we're looking for. Did something, like a lot of people have problems in their marriages. Yours yeah. wasn't perfect either. Not no, at all. Nobody who I've ever spoken to has had a, had a perfect one. So did this intention come from, uh-oh, our relationship isn't working and unless we do something... Yes, yeah, so our, our intentionality came from if you're married more than five years, you're not married to the same person you married. Mm -hmm. Like, and we got a, a revelation that you keep changing every five years and I needed to relearn who she was. What she used to like, she didn't like anymore. Yeah. And so I would do certain things and I was like, man, that used to really work. <laughs> like that used to really get you going. Like what, what happened? And so we made an intentionality that I am not going to pause your growth on the frame that I remember you as. Yeah. I'm going to keep learning you. And out of that, you know, I think it was, we had two kids and our, our son, um, we found out he had autism. And when we talk about crazy faith, like I'm sitting here and I'm believing for a change in his diagnosis mm -hmm. and we're going to therapies and all this other stuff. And in the midst of all that, I realized that that situation changed me and my wife a bunch. Hmm. And we had to go into a level of intentionality and making space for the new version of who we were hmm. to each other and fall in love with that person. And as we begin to do that, we like that person better than the one we married. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like we begin to understand like, man, I love you even more now because we've been through this together and because you're still here and because we can still laugh about that. And again, making space mm -hmm. made us love each other even more. And I don't know, I, I'm right after we get off this podcast, I'm gonna go find her. I'm missing <laughs> her right now. I, I need to give her a hug and a kiss right now. By the way, I think that what you said was so profound. The person who you're with now is a totally different person than you were with five years ago. Although they still sleep on the same side of the bed. Yep. They still use the red toothbrush. They still do yep. what they've always done. They are different. And you're right. It is relearning. I've actually, it's funny. I've been having these conversations with Joel lately about this is 
is who I am today. Yep. I used to enjoy doing that stuff, and now I'm this person. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The Sunday Sit Down with Willie Geist podcast. It's the conversations you want to have with the people you'd love to meet. Get your money's worth. Unedited, unfiltered. See ya. Sit down with Willie and listen wherever you get your podcasts. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. Tonight, the major announcement of the COVID vaccine. And this is a significant moment. Your news, whenever it happens, wherever you are, it's here now. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. By the man, the All right, it just made it too. These days, the news never stops. The morning's headlines change by afternoon, and by the end of the day, it's all totally different. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. I get it. I know that it can be hard to keep up. So let's get started together and go from there. Hey, I'm Hallie Jackson, and we have a ton going on tonight. Here's the deal. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Have you ever felt something from God and you thought to yourself, like, is this my gut or my soul talking or is it God? Because I was wondering how do we, and I've wanted this just for myself, how do you figure out if it's your yeah. will or him? I have this chapter in the book called Maybe Faith. Okay. And I think it's my, my favorite part of the book because people is like, how do you know it's God? How do you know it's the right thing? And most pastors won't tell you this, but I'll tell you very straight, you don't. Like you don't, you don't know at the starting line, is this God? It proves to be God. Uh -huh. And this is why I tell people I live my life at 51% faith. If, if, if I'm 51% mm -hmm. sure it's God, <laughs> I'm going for it. Okay. And because I have the heart to be able to be corrected and I'm humble ah, enough good. to say, you know what? I missed that. That I thought that was it, but <laughs> I ain't my bad guys really going on. And that's where... I, I've been able to see so many amazing things happen because some people stand at the starting line is like, okay, how long is this going to take? How much is this going to cost? Are we going to win? Is this worth it? And they end up living their life paralyzed at a pause at the start. And what I do is it's very, I tell people this, I said, it's, it's a lot easier to direct the moving car than it is to, to direct or, or steer a car that's standing still. <laughs> that's and true. I really do believe that as you start making the step, like, I'm not sure that this is it, but I'm going to at least start looking up homes in this city. Yeah. As you make that step, then there's either confirmation or denials or checks or your peace is not there. And then you'll know, like, well, maybe I need to go back to prayer. and Maybe I need to do something else. And as you live on maybe faith, like maybe this is you. Yeah, yeah. I see so many good things happen and um, it just takes being humble. Well, I do like that you talk about change because I think a lot of people say, whether they're in a relationship um, or friendships or whatever, like people are who they are. You either accept mm -hmm. them or you don't. People don't change. They can change around the edges. Mm -hmm. But in reality, 
that's who the, that's how they were raised. That's the way they're going to be. What's what's your yeah, answer? I don't that? really believe that because I know who I am mm -hmm. and I know who I was mm -hmm. and I know who I'm I'm trying to be. Hmm. I was a liar. I was a manipulator. I was somebody who was addicted to to pornography and hmm. wrong images. And I I had a lot of evil in my heart. I, 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 I only looked out for myself. I was very selfish. Like, that's who I was. Hmm. It, it's, was it wasn't what I presented, but that's who I was on the inside. Mm -hmm. And now today, I look at my life and how I give everything that uh, I have to help people, to serve other people, to make exceptions and uh, uh, allowances for people's faults and shortcomings. How I, like, that was not me. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, like that was not me. I, I had a, uh, a potential, uh, what was it called? Uh, I had a case um, in court for car insurance fraud. Mm -hmm. And like, all, like, I was a crazy guy. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I'm sitting here today and I am, I am all about spreading a message of hope, uh -huh. love, faith, and really helping people become their best versions. I know that transformation is real. I know that change is possible. And I am acutely aware of the grace that we all need to yeah. be able to make those decisions. D did your change, did your moment did it come like a lightning bolt? Did your moment of change come in baby steps and take years? Like Yeah. My one of my greatest sayings, and if you come around our church, our organization, you'll hear this all the time. Progression, not perfection. Hmm. I think that this, if this could become people's mantra, they would be able to do so much more when they allow the little movement forward to be the win instead of this big, like you said, lightning bolt mm -hmm. moment. It wasn't that for me. It was like this year, I'm gonna become better at listening and keeping my word. Hmm. And next year, I'm gonna try to stop eating a, a gallon of ice cream every <laughs> night before I go to bed. And this year, I'm going to open my scriptures and I wanna read at least 10 minutes a day. It, like, it just has been like Baby progression. Steps baby steps, baby faith, just making moves. And I look up 10, 15 years later, and it's like, you're a pastor of a church, and you're talking to <laughs> hundreds of thousands of people weekly. And like, I'm like, who are you? Like, that's how I feel. Do you ever drift away from God? Ooh. Do you ever? <laughs> you talking big language right here, right now. You used one of my trigger words, oh. drift. Oh, This year, our word, for our church is anchored. Hmm. And we, we are trying to get anchored spiritually, emotionally, physically, like and, and it's in every area of our life. Mm -hmm. But the tagline is this is the year of the anti-drift. Oh. And the one thing about drifting, so you said drifting and it like went through <laughs> my whole body right there. Because um, drifting is natural if there's not intention. Say that again, that was good. Drifting is natural if there is no intention, yes, yes. if you put a boat in water, there does not have to be a storm for that boat to drift. If you just put it there with no anchor, it's going to be out to sea in an hour and a half mm -hmm. because there was no intention of dropping an anchor somewhere. Mm -hmm. And yes, to answer your questions, there are tons of places in my life that I have drifted because I was not intentional. Mm -hmm. So one of those areas was in my health, very practically, the church is blowing up. I'm having all of these kids. And as the church is blowing up, I'm blowing up. Like I'm eating everything. I'm fat and happy. I'm, I'm eating ice cream. I'm doing all the different things. And this year, when we talk about Anchored, I looked at myself and I was 264 pounds. I was completely out of shape, all of those different things. And in a quiet time, I really felt so strongly that this was an area that I had been drifting. Yeah. And I made a decision that if, if I was shown something, I was gonna start in crazy faith, making steps toward that. So we started eating better, got a trainer, like I literally just finished working out. I'm, a hun I'm 229 pounds today. Whoa. From That was four months ago. And, and I'm 229 pounds, almost lost 35 pounds since I made the decision. <laughs> To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. 
Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it is this. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Just one last question, because I want to hear a sermon right now. I feel like I wish I could hear one. But <laughs> but is there, is there, and I'm not going to, I don't want to pin you down right now in case you can't, sometimes you can't remember, you've done so many great sermons, but was there one that really resonated with people in a way that surprised you? I mean, I know, yeah. I, could, I'm, I mean, I'm feeling like we're having one right now and we're just having a podcast, but but was there was there one that sort of sticks out in your mind that if that you could share with us for a little bit? Yeah, I, I think it would be the first message that I ever did of Crazy Faith. Um, I, I, I came off sabbatical, mm -hmm. like literally, this was my first message after being off for six weeks. And when I got up and spoke, I told people, I brought two chairs out on the stage and one was a kitty chair mm -hmm. and one was like an adult chair. And I was telling them, I said, most of us don't have faith in situations, circumstances, and places if it doesn't look strong enough to hold us up. Hmm. And I brought this big guy out on stage <laughs> and I said, which chair would you want to sit in? And he, of course, said the big chair. Yeah. And I said, what if I told you that the small chair was manufactured to hold you up? What if I told you this was God's will for your life? What if I told you that it can carry your weight? Which chair would you choose? And he said, I'd still choose the big chair. <laughs> and I said, doesn't this sound like many of our lives that we would rather choose the thing that looks good than the thing that was built for us? Hmm. The thing that that really other people mm -hmm. would say is not really the best for us. But the manufacturer or God tells you, like, I know this doesn't look like what you thought, but I want you to sit in it. I said, what if I sat in the chair? Then would you sit in it? And he was like, maybe. And so I sat in the kitty chair, and we were about the same size. And I said, now would you sit in that chair? He said, I don't know. And I said, sit in the chair. I said, look how much time you've wasted being able to stand on your own when something was designed for you that yeah. looked different yeah. but really was designed yeah. to hold up your weight. And then when that man sat down in the chair yeah. and it held him up like he was being cautious— <laughs> The whole uh, auditorium <laughs> begin to shout and you know what I'm saying? The, and because it was a picture yes. of what so many of us are living, we're living this idealistic life. Like if God would give me this and my chair looked like that yeah. and I had this husband yes. and I had this job yeah. and I was able to work at this city and all this other stuff. And God said, no, 
This no. chair is different. It looks different. Yeah. It's not probably what you would have put, but I designed it specifically for you. Just for you. Would you have crazy faith and put your weight on it? See, the whole thing was he didn't care if somebody else put their weight on it. But yeah. faith is actually putting your own weight and believing and trusting that this thing will hold you up. And I don't know, somebody may be listening right now that has an idea of what you want your chair or your life to mm -hmm. look like. And God may have a different chair for you yeah. that you're going to have to step in crazy faith and put your weight on it. But when you put your weight on it, how much more exciting <laughs> is it to be in something that was manufactured for you, your life, your family, and I didn't know it was going to resonate with so many people, wow. but we put that up online and millions of people have watched that message and um, just started living a life of crazy faith after that. Well, you are such a unique pastor. You're all by yourself. Yeah. I mean, you help people with relationships. You talk about people, things that, that you don't expect a pastor to talk about. And I love that because Got it's, to. it's all part of us. This book, Crazy Faith, is beautiful, and I love the subtitle, It's Only Crazy Until It Happens. Michael Todd, man, what a blast. Thank you. Oh, we could do this once a week. Come Maybe on. we need to start the Mike and Hoda show. Dang we it. can, we can, hey, listen, let's, let, let's, hey. let's do an hour uh, every week or every two weeks. Uh, let's look, do it. I'll be your sidekick any day of the week. <laughs> Thank you, honey. I appreciate you. Oh, love Thank you. Thank you so much. Sandra, thanks so much for doing this. It's great to see you. Hi, Willie. Great to be with you. I'm very anxious to talk about the chair. I told you I just got to see the first two episodes. Before we do that, though, I want to wish you a very happy milestone birthday. Happy birthday. Much. Thank you. You had an amazing post where you stopped and sort of took stock of your life and career and thanked just about everybody you could think of and recalled all these great shows that, that have made your career what it is. Yes, you know, I'm not a big poster, but I woke up early that morning and my mom had already texted me. <laughs> from there, and she's like, well, basically, they tell you my at eight o'clock in the morning. And I'm like, OK, I woke up and I basically spoke with my parents and milestone birthdays are wonderful times to take stock of things. And I just wanted to, I was really thinking about you know, my friendships and my family and actually uh, my work. And I just really wanted to thank everybody, you know. It was, it, it, it's a great uh, immediate way to send out a message. I, it, was, it was great to do, you know. Is, is it overwhelming in some ways to stop at this point and say, oh, because you are moving so fast in your life and your career to stop and say, oh, wow, look at, the, look at all the things I've done in these years. You know, actually doing stuff like, like this, of speaking to people who will ask me questions like this, <laughs> those are the moments that I actually have to stop and go, oh, what have I been doing? What have I been trying to make? Because people will put things into perspectives that I have not thought of. Um, and it's a really good checkup. Well, you've got something great to celebrate with the chair, the new series on Netflix. Oh, there she is. Our first lady chair woman. Explain for people who are thinking about watching it, sort of the, the plot, and also what about this great character drew you in? The Chair is a dramedy, and it's kind of like a workplace comedy that's set in academia. So I play the, uh, the role of Jiyun Kim, Professor Kim, who's just been the newly minted chair in the English department at, a, at Pembroke University, it's a fictitious university. And it, it's centered around a transgressive act that one of the fellow professors, uh, Bill Dobson, played by Jay Duplass, does in class. And it's then navigating as the chair how to manage the fallout from a, a very ill-informed mistake and how to keep um, her, the department, the English department, and in like the humanities relevant. But it also touches on so many things without uh, being pointed at it. It's like what it is to be a woman and a person of color who enters into a leadership role, who's trying to change a very antiquated and patriarchal white system. You know what I mean? How she relates to her students and to her coworkers, how she relates to her elderly father, how she relates to her adoptive daughter. Um, 
So it was a great opportunity to play such a, a, a dynamic and full-fleshed role. And I give all the credit to Amanda Peet who created this world. As you say, she steps into this place that has been run forever by old white guys. And in many cases, these are cartoonish old white guys kind of fumbling around, hanging on to their tenure. Could you dig into some personal experience as a woman of color who stepped into these prominent roles and, and roles of leadership and sort of understand what she was going through? Sure. And I'll also I'll try and frame also that hopefully, hopefully no one is a caricature in this piece. So even though you have, you know, older white professors, male professors, one, you know, the brilliant Bob Balaban, who plays uh, Professor uh, Elliot Renz, hopefully you're seeing his perspective on, on the effect of, of being the older generation and perhaps not have paid enough close attention to what the students want and how they need to learn. So I'll just start with that. And then uh, the next part of your question, which is like, do I know what it's like? Um, yeah, yeah, I do. And I, I think that that has got to have informed how I approach, you know, Jian. I, I, I can't exactly specifically point to what, but um, one of the things that I, I feel like I have learned in my career that is a little bit uh, ahead of Professor Kim is, um, is that change is slow when you are an individual facing an institution. And for me not to lose heart because for anyone who knows who's tried to enact change, it's never the way that you think it's going to happen. Right. And the challenges are there for you to only get more specific and deeper into your commitment to change. Um, and I, I, you just see Professor Kim just trying to balance all these things at once. Um, and so you have a real good balance of comedy and pathos. People really don't know what's going to happen. Really a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. I believe, I believe every dream, journey, and triumph. And it all starts here. United States, let's go! Feel the magic every day. The excitement is in the air. At the Winter Olympics, today is where the games begin. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It, to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> was talking smack part of this. Dr. Kim's name, which as a as an Asian woman, you as an American woman, you say that was really important that her name was authentically Korean. Can you explain that a little bit? Sure. It's like I can trace. I feel like how Hollywood has progressed, or widened you know when i was on Grey's anatomy for 10 years as christina yang it was the obama years and uh specifically the the show never addressed people's ethnicity nor did it really kind of address people's home lives it just was the style of the show so i never got to really necessarily explore what other parts of christina was and then with uh, the show um, Killing Eve, I was able to bring a certain aspect of Eve's uh, uh, cultural heritage in the third season. But that's what the show's not really about that. It's the show is really about the exploration of and the discovery of 
of a, a woman's own psyche. But in the chair, when I first opened that first page of the pilot and I saw that Dr. Kim's name is, is Jiyun Kim, uh, I just noted it in terms of the growth of my own career that now I can, I can play a character who specifically has a Korean name and all the characters are gonna call her that name correctly. And I do, it was significant to me. Um, I think uh, there's been a lot of accommodation or denial or just not existence of the fact that people have, um, they, they're in, in their names, their ethnicity is, is, is in their names. So it was just great to, it was great to see and it was really important to me. It feels like this fits into something you've been thinking about in your recent roles, which is to give authentic Asian experiences in the in the parts you take and in your performances different, as you say, from something like Grey's Anatomy, which just sort of fit into the plot. You can sort of tell more of the story. And I feel like we see that in the chair when she goes home and her father lives with her and we see symbols of religion on the wall, which you've talked about in your old child, in your own childhood. So what does it mean to you personally to be able to have that power in Hollywood to say, this is how the role is going to be. This is how I'm going to play that. Well, it's definitely not as let's say cut and dry in that way, because for me, it's more like finding the right collaborators finding, cause I am, I'm not a writer at this point in my life, you know what I mean? But I'm not, I never want to, I never want to limit myself, but uh, uh, it's about trying to find the world and, and, and the voices that I am interested in, in uh, inhabiting and collaborating with. So, you know, Amanda set the whole world. This was always going to be a part of it. Uh, Dr. Kim was always going to be taking care of an elderly parent and she was always going to be taking care of an adoptive daughter. So no matter what, you get to open up a lot of story dynamic with that. And that was also one of the things that really, really interests me. And is there a lot more of that now, Sandra, is just by virtue of all the different outlets that we have for those shows added with a heightened consciousness and awareness that we need more of it? I, I, you know what? I think so. I'm almost afraid to say, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and anyone who's a person of color knows what I'm doing when I'm saying, I don't even want to say that it might be true, but it might be true because there is more openness to it because there is a uh, more interest in it. What I hope develops alongside of it is a certain type of patience and a certain type of support that comes in the form of development. You know, voices have to be developed. Do you know if you suddenly want a, a, a storyline based on X, Y, Z, because it's you seem to think that the public wants it, you need to develop the voices to be able to take on those leadership roles to make that happen. Because ultimately what it depends on is that the storytelling is interesting and authentic and true. You know what I mean? Because you can have whoever you want on camera. It doesn't matter. But if it's not interesting, if it is not truthful, I don't think people will watch it. I think that's probably right. And, and as you talk about bringing your own experience to roles like this, I love reading the story of your own upbringing outside Ottawa, where you really had to convince your parents that performance and acting was the thing for you. You were proven to be very right. Um, but what were those early years like when you said, mom and dad, I know you maybe don't get this, but this is what I want to do. You know, I'm one of those extremely lucky people who have a good relationship with their parents. And what I've learned uh, from that experience uh, and obviously growing and maturing as a person is that adversity is extremely important in the development of a person's character. And the time, you know, my parents are immigrants from South Korea, you know what I mean? And in a very, very, very typical uh, Korean American immigrant kind of upbringing, just very middle of the road typical, education and having a good job and security is very important. Anyone who was a child of an immigrant knows this. Um, so my parents, it was very, very foreign, you know, the entertainment world or the artistic world, it was very, very, very foreign to them. 
But what I am so blessed with is that the way that they were an obstacle to me, it only makes you tougher in a good way. I've spoken about this before. It's like, you know, if you have the two most important people telling you that you shouldn't do it or that you can't do it, you, uh, and you still do it anyway, you do it anyway. Um, you have, a, uh, you just built an internal confidence and you can only build that by going through it. So when you are pounding the pavement, when people are saying no, when you have self-doubt, you already have a certain layer of confidence because you've already surpassed, you know, uh, the the doubt of the two most important people to you. I, I was very lucky in my in my in my career so far, you know, in the early days I had success quite early. Yeah. And I was able to show them very full pieces, you know, where the entire film was about my character. I did this film early on by Mina Shum called Double Happiness. And it was about this character named Jade Lee who wants to be an actress is in a very typical Chinese Canadian home. And it's a very simple coming of age story where she just eventually leaves home to pursue her dreams. When my parents saw that, my mom said to me, is this what you basically wanted to tell us? Mm. And I just felt, so seen by her, like she got it. I mean, my parents really eased off the the gas pedal because I was fortunate enough to be able to show them my work and they could understand that um, that there's meaning in in that work. And I think it's it's a little tricky and hard for immigrant parents, let's just say, to understand that if their child is an artist, uh, just to to not be afraid, even if they fail, or even if they're hungry and just eating pizza for three days. If they're, if you see your child that wants to be an artist in some sort of way, just to, just to give them a little space to try it out. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. This is a very different kind of program. We're here to start conversation about the big things happening in our world. Professor, I'm not asking you to predict the future, but what do we think that the new normal is going to be? Is part of this that everyone's rethinking their jobs during this pandemic and their relationship to their employers? What is your biggest tip for any parent who's concerned about this? It's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. The moment when you win the Golden Globe for Killing Eve, you get up there and they showed on the broadcast, I think before you even got to the microphone, your parents. And your dad stands up and breaks into applause and you're doing okay. And then you see them, you you could see it sort of wash over you. What was that moment like to see your parents who were skeptical at the outset stand in the back and watch you receive this huge award and to watch their daughter be so successful at what she chose to do? You know, I have been shameless with my parents. I have brought them to so many awards. They're really, really pros. But it's profoundly 
profoundly satisfying that when you reach a certain type of milestone, and I would say that for me, it was hosting the show, um, that uh, your parents who support you so deeply are actually there in the audience. Yeah, it's profoundly um, satisfying to be able to come to a certain point in your career when in the moment that you're celebrated, that your parents get to witness it. I mean, you should ask them what they feel. <laughs> I honestly, it's, it was, it's such a blur. You know, it's such a blur. But it was also um, really important to me to be able to publicly thank them. You know, and, and you know, you don't, you, you, I, I mean, I'm honestly just doing it in, in the moment because my parents are there. But, but um, subsequently, I, I just, re, I, I, it was reflected back to me that, I think that it meant a lot to uh, a lot of child, children of immigrants mm. and a lot of uh, Asian American kids and just people uh, to be able to express gratitude and love to their parents publicly. I don't think I have to ask them. I saw their faces that night. <laughs> I, think <they> were, <laughs> I think they were pretty proud. I think they were pretty proud. So you talked about that early success in Canada and then you make the leap over to American television, and you mentioned Arliss. I think most people point to Sideways as the breakout moment for you. Did it feel that way in real time when everyone said, oh, who's she? I like her, let's put her in more stuff. <laughs> you know, I think it was actually a timing thing because um, Sideways and Grey's Anatomy happened at the same time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So those are those, uh, you know, just mysterious times of like, you know, uh, the stars are aligned. And I think that did happen. And, you know, working on Sideways was one of the highlights of my career. It's just, I, it, I think it still holds up. It's Definitely. been like a while now, but I, I think it still holds up. So that kind of like one, two punch of like Sideways and then Grey's Anatomy, it was uh, uh, it was a, a, a real <laughs> a real shot out of the cannon. Um, but I, but I also am, am so happy that, you know, it happened in my early thirties. So I already had a, a career behind me and a, and a fairly good amount of grounding to be able to uh, receive uh, what that meant to suddenly come into people's consciousness. And it kind of felt like it seems that with that sideways success, you said to yourself, I don't have to do the, girlfriendy sidekicky thing i can be front and center be a central character when you make those certain like leaps in your career you change the point of view of what you're going to accept mm-hmm. um and for me it was not lo- it was not in the terms of i don't want to be xyz right it was very much like I only want to play um, dynamic characters. I only want to play things that inspire me. And that's that's always a really challenging time to be able to move your career into a place of inspiration as opposed to of necessity. So mm-hmm. I was very lucky to be able to decide and start practicing that. And that's, that's definitely when Grey's Anatomy came along. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. What Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. (laughs) And important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job 
is to think about what you tell me. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. So Grey's Anatomy comes along. You talk about being shot out of a cannon. There's no bigger cannon to be shot out of in terms of a show that was right in the cultural zeitgeist that people were talking about the morning after all the time. What was it like in your life to be thrust onto that show, to have this big role on the biggest show on TV, to have more and more people interested in your life, to know who you are, to say hello to you on the street? How did it change your life? Well, that's a big question. <laughs> big question. And uh, I don't think that, I mean, I'm guessing that to be perfectly honest, it was traumatic. Hmm. <laughs> it's traumatic. And the reason why I'm saying that is uh, I don't know whether it's just I come from a different generation or my temperament as an artist is that you know that the best work or the work that you or, or the circumstances you need to do your work is with a lot of privacy. Hmm. Um, and that's and that's just to find the authentic self. And so when one loses one's anonymity, you have to build skills uh, to still try and be real. Um, so I know this is probably not an answer that people are particularly interested in, but it is a truthful one. But having been in it, I've I've grown to adapt and I've grown, it really forces you to, to grow internally, for at least for me, internally, to be able to, I, I mean, I went from uh, not being able to go out or not being able to go, like hiding in restaurants or never looking out, to then being able to receive and manage, um, and manage projection, manage attention, uh, manage expectation while not losing the sense of self. And that takes a little while to figure out. How do you do it though? How do you do it when all the eyeballs in the restaurant are on you? How do you say, okay, this is my life. It's not normal, but it's my life. Here's how I'm going to manage it. How did you make those adjustments? Because I've heard the same from other actors who've been shot out of a cannon on a big show or a big movie and all of a sudden their life like that, the weekend the movie comes out is totally different. Mm. Um, well, have a good therapist. <laughs> I'm not joking. Important. Yeah. No, I'm not joking. It's very, very important because there's a lot that one would need to talk about that you should not talk about with your partner or friends or family. You don't burden them with that. It's a very specific road. And so one have a good therapist. Hopefully you have a good support system as a support network, you know. I am very lucky that I do have a very great support system. Um, and you just have to work at finding your way to stay grounded. And a lot of times that's by saying no. Hmm. You've done well with it, certainly. And from the, the question that always comes up when someone leaves a show like that is, okay, what do you do from there? What next? And here comes Killing Eve and you have this other great success where, as I said, you win another Golden Globe Award. Uh, what was it about that part that so attracted you and what makes that show so popular? People are so obsessed with it. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I can tell you definitely what intrigued me um, was Phoebe Waller-Bridge's tone. Yeah. Because I had not seen it before. And I knew it was fresh. Like I really knew it was fresh right off the page. And I knew I could, I knew I could follow it. I like the circumstance where, you know, it's this kind of very middle of the road, middle of her life woman and every woman who then develops an extremely dangerous and obsessive relationship with a with an assassin. Like those are crazy circumstances. <laughs> but what I could also see in the piece, which I was very interested in exploring, that it's about a woman's self-discovery. And that was ultimately what was so intriguing. And, and hopefully that element as well as... Um, a type of very um, exciting uh, 
push and pull relationship between Eve and Villanelle is exciting to people. Uh, but mostly, it's, I, I hope it is, is that you see these two women trying to figure out themselves by somehow needing to be in relationship with each other. And that was really interesting. That was really, really interesting to me. Like, how, how do you figure out how to be in relationship with a character that wants to kill you? Right. <laughs> it's a big question. That's a big question. Well, part of the fun of the show is that you have a different woman writing every season. So can you give us a little look ahead to season four of what your fans might expect? Well, I honestly, I am just in the middle. I'm here in London, just in the middle of shooting the, the season four, the last season of Killing Eve. And I can tell you nothing. I knew it. Except oh, I thought I might break you, Sandra. <laughs> Except that, you know, we're really, really working hard to try and like really honor that relationship and, and, and to find out what their, how their story not ends, but somehow, somehow finishes at, at this moment, you know, um, that's what we're really working hard on trying to find that, that, that way to, to service all those characters beautifully. Very diplomatic answer. It felt like you were giving something and you really weren't. You were such a pro, such a pro. <laughs> Sandra, I really appreciate your time. Congratulations on the chair. It's so fun to talk to you. I know you're busy working, so thanks for taking the time. Thank you so much. Happy Monday, everybody, and welcome to a jam packed Pop Star Plus to begin your week. Coming up, we've got the scoop from the star of a new and very sweet Netflix film called The Royal Treatment. Also, Jen is chatting with Mark Brown, the man behind Arthur as the beloved children's show based on his book Nears Its End. Plus, we're taking it back to 2001 with a little set visit to Law & Order SVU with Mariska Hargitay and Christopher Maloney. But first, of course, here's your pop start. Get right to it. Go. We're going to start with Priyanka Chopra and Nick Jonas. Congratulations are in order. Because the couple has just welcomed their first child together on Friday, Priyanka and Nick revealing the good news in a joint statement on Instagram writing, we are overjoyed to confirm that we've welcomed a baby via surrogate. We respectfully ask for privacy during this special time. This comes just weeks after Chopra told Vanity Fair that children were a big desire for their future. And the mm -hmm. couple who just celebrated their third wedding anniversary last month has not yet shared the name or gender of their newborn, but we are still wishing their growing family nothing but the best. Great people. Next up, James Bond, Uncle Al. Here we go. Now okay. that Daniel Craig has wrapped up his run as 007 in No Time to Die, the hunt is on for the next James Bond. On a recent episode of Deadline's Crew Call podcast, producer Barbara Broakley revealing that fan favorite contender Idris Elba might be in the running for the iconic role. When asked if there have been any conversations with Idris about taking the part, she said, well, I'm friends with him and he's a magnificent actor. It's been part of the conversation, but it's always difficult to have that conversation when you have someone in the seat. Oh, she goes okay. on to say that after audiences have had a little more time to see Daniel Craig's last performance, they'll start working on filling that role. I've said it since 1978. Idris Elba <laughs> Please. needs to be the next that's 007. Have that. Period. No that's more that's close. Yeah, let's have, have, the, let's have the conversation. We've let's been go. Been go. We've been saying this forever. Yeah. Come on. We're ready. Let's, let's go. go. Yeah, just announce it already. Wrap it up. Next up, John Hamm, the Emmy winning actor, has been cast <laughs> in some pretty big roles over the years. Have you seen his ad? Yes. Yeah, so good. So good. <laughs> uh, Mad Men, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, Baby Driver. Ooh. Well, there's one role that uh, John Hamm hasn't gotten. He's made his feelings very clear about how he feels about it in the new ad for Apple TV+. Plus. Hey, Apple. Did I do something to offend you? I mean, Samuel L. Jackson, Billie Eilish, Tom Holland, Chris Evans? <laughs> what about John Hamm? Seriously? Denzel, Francis McDormand, Momoa, Snoopy. Snoopy. Two Mahershalas? Kind of feels like cheating. <laughs> Could have cloned me! <laughs> the whole ad is really oh, funny. It's is. like a so Super Bowl ad, right? great. It's great. Finally, Betty White. The newly released video shows the legendary actress just 11 days before she passed away in December, shared to White's Facebook page. The message was originally recorded as a thank you to her fans on what would have been her 100th birthday. Here's a peek of that. I just want to thank you all for your love and support over the years. 
thank you so much and stick around. In the caption, the page administrator thanks fans for continuing the actress's legacy by donating in honor of the hashtag Betty White Challenge, which, by the way, raised almost $13 million wow. for animal uh, shelters and rescues. And they call it Popstar Plus for a reason. We've got a few more items for you. And we'll start with Kate McKinnon, the SNL star, has transformed into Tiger King's Carol Baskin in the first teaser for Peacock's Joe vs. Carol. McKinnon starring opposite John Cameron Mitchell, who looks great, as he takes on the role of the former Big Cat owner Joe Exotic. The upcoming eight-episode series is set to explore their explosive relationship between Baskin and Exotic, made famous in Netflix's 2020 hit docu-series. And here's a peek. Wherever you are, coming for you. She wants to mess with me. I can mess with her. I got a message for Carol Baskin. If you sit down and talk, we can come to an understanding. <laughs> So it's war. It's war. Okay, that looks good. Joe versus Carol. Start stre streaming on Peacock again on March 3rd. Finally, Rachel Ziegler, the Golden Globe winning actress and New Jersey native, stopped by Britain's Graham Norton show on Friday, and she revealed the incredible revolving door of celebrity guests who just happened to swing by the West Side Story set when they were shooting Steven Spielberg's recent remake. Bruce Springsteen came three times, and he came to see me sing I Feel Pretty, and he had his, his aviators on. He's like, go to see the Jersey girl sing, and I just peed my pants. <laughs> Was that the, still the same day that Barack Obama came as well? Barack Obama came... A, a, I like guy. that he gets third billing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also how, appearing. It goes Bruce, Steve, Barack. And it's, I'm sitting there on the couch, and Michelle Obama's next to me, and Bruce Springsteen's there, <laughs> and Barack Obama and John Williams and Steven Spielberg and John Williams is talking to Gustavo Dudamel, and John turns to Barack Obama and says, well, what do you think? And I'm like, well, what does it matter what he thinks he was the president of the United States? <laughs> <laughs> the boss and the Obamas? Talk about pressure for a first-time actor. Kudos, by the way, to Rachel, who's been keeping her cool and just continuing to rack up all the awards this season. Well-deserved. Those are your headlines for today. Coming up, we're going to introduce you to the star of Netflix's newest rom-com, The Royal Treatment. We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world. Because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. People really don't know what's going to happen. Only a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. <laughs> There is some late breaking news for hours in the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just did too. We've got a Congress that doesn't seem very functional. What's this election year going to look like? Are we getting ahead of the science? Are we behind the science? How much did this booster confusion set us back? Can the January 6th committee come up with anything that would change Republican minds? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. In the city of angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back to Popstar Plus. As a teenager actor and singer, Laura Moreno starred on the Disney Channel show Austin and Alley. Well, now she's all grown up starring and singing in a new Netflix film called The Royal Treatment. Here's a look. a call to do the hair and makeup for the royal wedding <gasps> for fifty thousand dollars it's like a glass slip but money the royal treatment is a rom-com movie that essentially is about my character izzy who's a new york hairstylist izzy gets the opportunity to do the hair and makeup for the royal wedding of prince thomas of lavania played by the lovely mina masood and maybe sparks fly between Prince Thomas and Izzy. 
I play Izzy and honestly, she has been one of my favorite characters that I've ever played uh, for a few reasons. Every character that I played, I always find some part of myself in the character. But Izzy, for sure, I really, really identify with. She speaks her mind. I very much connect with her uh, sense of we all have to treat each other well and respect each other and when you don't that makes me mad um izzy also works really hard she's from new york she has uh uh you know her mother and her grandmother her nona uh which i also is very uh connected to i have a lot of family in new york on my dad's side who were all born well, most of them were born in italy one paper please Hot Prince visit makes temperatures rise in the city. <laughs> Seriously though, what's with his hair? I worked with a New York dialect coach. I did so much work on this accent and it still is, it's gonna be jarring for people who know me. May I introduce Prince Thomas? I'm Izzy of 183rd Street. Nina's so lovely. He was on the top of my list of playing Prince Thomas. So I was so excited we got him. We really bonded while we were in quarantine. You have to quarantine for two weeks in New Zealand. So we were in different hotels, we were actually in different cities, but we were like FaceTiming every day, and going over lines, but also getting to know each other, which was really, really nice. The town car's trailing us. One, two, three, stop. I think the regular girl meets Prince, of a man of country especially, is a subgenre I love. And I think for us, we very much wanted to pay homage to that, um, movies that have come before that, um, us in that subgenre, in that vein. You know, I, I think we also kind of poked fun in moments in that genre as well. Honestly, I think we just really didn't take ourselves too seriously. Our goal was to have fun and we really did. We had such an amazing time, the cast, the crew, everyone a part of it. Obviously, we even mentioned Genovia in the movie. I do think the movie is obviously plot-wise quite different from Princess Diaries, but I, I mean, that is one of my favorite movies and I'm obsessed with Anne Hathaway, so that is truly the biggest compliment someone can give. <laughs> so, Dance With You, the song that actually is already out in the world and is in our last scene of the movie and in the end credits, that was something I very much specifically wrote for the film. And I wanted to write a song that I thought, you know, encompassed what the vibe of the movie was, which is joy, which is happiness. Worst Kind of Hurt, which is the song that comes out the same day as The Royal Treatment. And I am singing it with Ravel, who I absolutely love. This is the first time for me that I have the singer artist part of my career, personality, whatever you want to say, and my acting part and the film and television part so synergized um, while also feeling quite separate. Because obviously I've done music and projects before, Austin Alley, A Cinderella Story, Christmas Wish, but the music was very um, like part of the plot. Like I sang while you were watching and I definitely didn't want that to happen. So why are you just a hairdresser? Just? Truth is, I'd love nothing more than to do something else. I think our movie does deal with some pretty important concepts like finding your identity within yourself versus your identity within your family. The fact that no matter who you are, you could be the prince of a made up country, you could be a New York hairstylist, but you have the ability to make change in the world and change in your community. And that's something I'm really proud about that the movie embodies and, and shows. And I love that about Izzy. So I, I hope that anyone who watches it, I uh, feels inspired by our message and more than anything, feels just real happy after. By the way, The Royal Treatment is now streaming on Netflix. Coming up, Jenna's conversation with the driving force behind children's favorite for decades. We're talking about the one and only Arthur. That's next. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our yes, show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. 
and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. I believe, I believe. Every dream, journey, and triumph. And it all starts here. United States, let's go. Feel the magic every day. The excitement is in the air. At the Winter Olympics, today is where the games begin. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. The Sunday Sit Down with Willie Geist podcast. It's the conversations you want to have with the people you'd love to meet. Get your money's worth. Unedited, unfiltered. See ya. Sit down with Willie and listen wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. And we're back on Popstar Plus. Author and illustrator Mark Brown gave us the wonderful world of Arthur. He created the beloved book series and TV show that we all know and love. So we sat down with Jenna to share some memories ahead of the show's 25th and final season. It is 8.35 on this Monday morning with Jenna on this, this wonderful kind of day. Of course, that's the theme song that you're hearing. The theme song for that beloved children's TV series. And uh, Arthur. Love you. Yes. you got to sit down with the author of Arthur. I know, say that ten times. <laughs> I know, I was trying to say uh, a great a story about an eight-year-old aardvark. No, don't y'all love that aardvark? Yeah, good morning. This year marks 45 years since the first book hit shelves, as well as the 25th and final season of Arthur on PBS Kids. I spoke with Mark about how the series has impacted kids and adults, probably all of us, for decades, and how it changed his life. Never in a million years did I imagine I would go on all of these adventures because of Arthur. Arthur is the eight-year-old aardvark who navigates life and faces real issues that real kids often encounter. Author Mark Brown is the genius behind the character and his cast of friends like Buster, Francine, and Binky. But as the 25th and final new season of Arthur approaches, it's hard to imagine that the series almost never happened. <gasps> the book was very much inspired by a bedtime story for your own son. I had just lost a teaching job and I went home that night and my son asked for a bedtime story. And I said, oh, I've had a terrible day. I really don't feel like telling you a story tonight. And he said, oh, come on, Dad. Maybe it'll make you feel better. Ugh. And he was right. More than 125 books later, combined with the longest-running animated kids series in the U.S. Hey, hey! What a wonderful kind of day. Arthur has made a lasting impact on millions of children and adults. The best thing that Arthur has done for kids all these years is tell them the truth. I think kids trust him, and I value that trust that I have with kids. Is there a little bit of you in Arthur? Or a lot of you? Okay, I guess the secret's out. <laughs> yeah, there's a little bit of me in Arthur. As a seven-time Emmy winner, the show has not only received awards, but strong praise for the diversity and inclusion represented throughout the series. Mr. Ratburn is married. I still can't believe it. You were making sure kids, no matter who they were, felt like they weren't alone. Was that the purpose or that's just sort of what happened? When PBS came to me originally, their agenda was to make kids want to read. And then we found, you know, all of these subjects that we could deal with that would be helpful to kids. Guest stars from John Lewis, Jane Lynch, to Alex Trebek have all appeared on the show. But it's who hasn't been on Arthur that's causing a stir on the internet. There are millions of memes that say he looks just like John Legend. 
They do. They're doppelgangers. Yeah, who knows? Maybe we'll do something together. Are you telling me that maybe... Oh, maybe? now you're going into uncharted territory here. <laughs> do you ever just marvel at the fact that this character is so iconic in the fabric of our culture that Chance the Rapper is singing the theme song. Believe in yourself, but that's the place we start. And I said, hey. Do you ever just think, wow? Yeah, I do every day. Another cultural icon inspired the title of his latest Arthur book, Believe in Yourself, his dear friend and mentor, Mr. Fred Rogers. He said, Mark, every child needs just one person to believe in them, to make it in the world. And boy, that stuck with me. As the series approaches the end, many young fans anxiously await to find out how author's story will unfold. We will address the most often asked questions that kids ask us about Arthur and his friends. While feeling bittersweet that this chapter is coming to a close, Brown is forever grateful to the little aardvark that came into his life. You did many jobs before this. You were a truck driver, you were a teacher. Short order cook. You did all these different things. I got fired so many times from all these jobs. I feel like the luckiest guy in the world because I'm doing this job that I love. It's almost like Arthur found you. Do you ever feel that way? I do. I mean, if it weren't for that bedtime story that night, it changed my life. Oh, okay, so this was so much the fabric of my childhood, but also he, he I love talking to him because he's so right that our kids can inspire us. Yes. You know, seeing the world through their eyes, he went on to have this incredible career. And he says, this is not the last you're going to see of Arthur. Okay. Other projects are in the works. I, I'm guessing a movie with John Legend. I thought a podcast oh, I'm Arthur. Moving a, oh, yeah. <laughs> movie. I'm guessing a movie with John Legend. That's my guess. But also, episodes will obviously yeah. still continue to air on PBS Kids. But the 25th and final new season premieres on February 21st. Arthur found him. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. What a sweet man. Yeah. Yeah. A lovely, Don't lovely love. man. Yeah. Brilliant, yeah. too. Thanks, Thanks Jenna. Thank y'all. Thanks, JBH. Oh, we also want to mention, y'all, that Mark's latest book, Believe in Yourself, What We Learned from Arthur, is out tomorrow. And you can pre-order a copy right now at today.com slash shop. From one fan favorite to another, SVU watchers, you're going to really enjoy what we have from our Vault series. That's next. I believe, I believe. Every dream, every journey, every triumph. And it all starts here. Let the celebration be. Excitement is in the air. Shadow is he superhuman? Feel the magic every day. She is a superstar. <laughs> Kayla, we are cheering <laughs> you on. Sean White! And share every moment with us at the Winter Olympics. Today. Today. Today, today. today is where the games begin. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The Sunday Sit Down with Willie Geist podcast. It's the conversations you want to have with the people you'd love to meet. Get your money's worth. Unedited, unfiltered. See ya. Sit down with Willie and listen wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Welcome back. Law & Order SVU is a pop star favorite. Uh, it's been on our minds lately. You know, certainly, will that romance ever be in the cards for Olivia Benson and Elliot Stabler? I don't know. But today, we're flashing back to the long-running show's sophomore season. This will take us back to 2001. We found a moment from our vault when Uncle Al visited the cast on set. While many new television programs have already bit the dust, audiences seem to be sticking by some old favorites. Now in its sophomore season, Law & Order Special Victims Unit has really caught on on Friday nights. And our own Al Roker got a chance to go on location with the show right here in New York City. Background. 
I gotta tell you, this, this is kind of exciting. We're down yep. in the meat packing district. Is there something exciting about doing a show here in New York City? Absolutely. So there's no need to ask. Is this how you like it? For an actor to be in the streets of New York, you're not on a back lot, you're not in a predictable, boring city that we've seen a million times on TV. So it's very inspiring. I could go on doing this as long as the check's clear. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing like it. It's this energy that just uh, infuses your soul with what a certain je ne sais, hmm. You know Genese, what I'm Genese, what you looking at? Nah, you... <laughs> what is this, open season? A few drinks, a little smoke, a bunch of guys wet down, a couple dozen women. One of the hallmarks of a Dick Wolf series seems to be, you know, sort of a, an evolving cast. Yeah. And you've got a new cast member. Yes, with, with, uh, two. Two new cast Stephanie members. Stephanie March and Ice-T. It is in Bishop Tutuola. Does it change the dynamic? of what you guys do? Um, no, it hasn't. It's been actually a really great, both of them have been quite uh, interesting additions for the show. It's always good to get uh, new blood in there, see what they're gonna, uh, they're gonna bring to the table. Ice brings a whole different energy to the show. He's really, he's been really fun for me personally to get to know because he's got such a unique vibe. He brings a, a street sensibility to it, a guy with a slight swagger and the kind of the, the, the street credibility. Sooner or later, she's gonna have to face the facts that her husband's a rapist. Why? She doesn't have to face it unless we prove it. And we don't want her pushed there by Harper Anderson. Street justice is always bloody. If anything, I think I may bring a little broader demographic to this show. What do you mean? I'm probably the only person on this show that kids six years old know who I am. So Ice-T brings that youth into it. And you are the knot in the pit of your stomach. You're teamed up with the character John Munch. The two of you together is, is an interesting concept. It was a very easy connection. You know, he's cool, I'm cool. Only thing problem with working with Richard is he took all the black outfits, so I can't wear black. You know, getting a chance to play the kind of cop that I guess I would be if I was a policeman is a great thing. So this is a good job for me. You wouldn't expect Munch to have a partner like Ice-T, and I, and I think it's working out great. We both enjoy working together. Uh, they're not overly chummy, and they're not at each other's throats like a corny bickering thing. It's just like two guys who are kind of cynical and dead set on, fortunately, in, in our line of work, Special Victims Unit, the bad guys are all really bad guys. There's no ambiguity here. Do you think you were received pretty openly here? When you first get to a show, you got to feel everybody out. You know, and uh, everybody on this show is very cool. No, no problems, no issues. Uh, I just had a problem early, I think, with really just trying to figure out how they wanted me to play this detective. And then Dick Wolf just came in and said, just be Ice-T. Just be Ice-T. That's what we want you to do. When you say, well, be Ice-T, but it, it's not, I would think, it's not that easy. I mean, it's just, it, what you're acting, your well, acting is still your it's, acting. It's, it's, the question is, when you say be hip, how hip do you want me? Because I can take it so hip you couldn't understand a word I said. <laughs> <laughs> I can take it so hip you wouldn't even understand the dialogue. You need a translation. Yeah, you need the translation. But they don't know. I think some people don't know how hip I can get. So, yeah, I can get so hip you wouldn't understand. I'd be like saying, yo, yo, word, yo, check this out, man. We got to jump this skeezer right quick. She's tripping out here in the streets, man. I'm about to blow his wig back. You'd be like, what did he just what say? What did he say? <laughs> Son of a... What? It's that guy from the apartment. He said he never heard of her. Yeah, I've been really lucky to work with other actors who are really good, who really enjoy what they're doing. But generally speaking, it's been uh, an ideal work situation. In this show, it's so much about the ensemble. Yes. The story's mm -hmm. the star. It's, it's, it's more, it seems like it's more of an actor's program. You're correct. I think the, uh, the crime is a star. You know, the, the, the viewers tune in to see, OK, let's watch uh, our heroes follow the crime. But we all really love each other. Uh, as people and as performers, so that makes it such a pleasure. So you don't mind handing the ball off, and uh, everyone gets their, their chance to bat. Guess what? She's dead. Fresh gash to the arm definitely post-mortem. Your second season. Are you ready to be in here for, for the long haul? Yeah, I sort of uh, see what life throws at me, and I'm, I'm so happy to be here. I sort of trust the process. Who knows where I'll be in three years, but... Um, but I love, I love New York, and uh, I love this character, and I love uh, my cast mates, and, and so I'm pretty happy right now. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You're
is that difficult as an actor coming into something that's already up and running? It's good to come into something that's already winning. Coming into something that's losing and then ask to help pick it up, that's scary. But coming into something that's already winning, that's a blessing. So fun to travel back in time to think. That show, 21 years later, still going strong. Love it. SVU. Thanks for watching, everybody. We appreciate it. We've got another episode of Popstar Plus Brewing. It'll be here tomorrow. We look forward to seeing you then. Have a great day. Welcome to Today All Day. All day? Today All Day. All day. This is a long oh, way of man. asking yeah, who's your okay. favorite character you've ever all played? Right. A unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> What is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things? Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. I don't want the wrath of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cut. Cold Cut. Hi, buddy Cal. Cooking with me. That's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today, with simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit now. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do the weather out. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, wow. Ambush Makeovers. Wow. Okay. Look at it. It doesn't, it doesn't look so good. No, it doesn't look good. <laughs> will you okay. judge us in a cook-off? I yes. will. And okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day. Today, all day, family. It's Friday. We're so happy you're with us. Yes, yes, we sure are. And we, we're also happy that you're watching this little digital show that we call Today in 30. We closed out the week here today with another big show. Top of that historic winter storm. Yeah, taking aim at tens of millions up and down the East Coast. So who's going to see the most snow and how could it impact your weekend? As always, Mr. Roker has the answer. Yeah, and then if you end up getting snowed in, have no fear because Jill Martin has snow day hacks to help you pass the time this weekend. Plus some deals on cold weather items you can use throughout the winter months. And this is a great story, folks. We are going back to school with the bus himself. NFL legend Jerome Bettis, Hall of Famer, Super Bowl champ, now pursuing another dream. He's going back to Notre Dame to finish his college degree. Our visit with him on campus and why that diploma means so much to him. Oh, it's awesome. No time to waste. Let's get it started. Time for Today, Today in 30. 30. So let's get right to Al's forecast. We've been watching those models. Have they converged? Do we have a better idea now of what we're going to get? That's right, guys. Looks like uh, the European model is going to win out. Uh, we've got 65 million people impacted by winter weather advisories, winter storm warnings, and blizzard warnings from Virginia to Maine. Last time this happened, four years ago. So this is unprecedented. What is a blizzard? The technical term, strong winds gusting frequently to 35 miles per hour. We're talking about blowing snow that reduces visibility to a quarter mile or less and those conditions have to exist for at least three hours and we expect that throughout parts of the region so here's what we're looking at philadelphia you see light to moderate snow from 3 a.m to 8 a.m snow should end by noon we move up i-95 to new york city heavy snowfall 4 to 10 a.m snow ends around 2 move into hartford connecticut we're going to look for that heaviest snow between 9 a.m and 4 p.m saturday the snow continues till 8 boston you are the big winner or or loser, depending on how you look at this. Extreme snow, strong winds, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Snow will end, don't, doesn't end until 11 o'clock at night. Powerful winds for the entire tri-state and all the way down to Atlantic City and further south. Wind gusts of over 45 miles per hour. Power disruption disruptions from Baja Harbor, Maine. 
all the way down to the Delmarva Peninsula. Snowfall amounts, here's what we're looking at. We're talking about near impossible travel conditions and whiteout conditions. Extreme snowfall rates, two to four inches per hour in some spots. So Atlantic City, 12 to 18 inches of snow. Snow, DC, maybe one to two inches, that's it. Philly, four to eight. Hartford, eight to 12. East end of Long Island and parts of Connecticut, 12 to 18 inches of snow and Boston, 18 to 24 inches. We're talking airport delays, obviously. Boston, New York, lesser delays, Philly and Washington. And if you're driving I-95 from Philadelphia all the way to Bangor, going to be a big mess. And from I-90 Buffalo to Boston is going to be tricky as well. We're going to continue to fine tune these models as more information comes in. Craig? All right, we're going to switch gears now as we welcome in Tom Yamas. Here's the story everyone's going to be talking about this week. Some great news on Friday, right? Yeah. Uh, let's talk about football as we head into this weekend. Fans are gearing up for another wild NFL Sunday. The road to Super Bowl 56 down to its final four with the Chiefs and Bengals in a Midwest matchup. Rams and 49ers on the West Coast now just one win away from the Super Bowl. NBC's Morgan Chesky joins us with the biggest storylines from the conference championships. Morgan, good morning. <laughs> Hey, Tom, good morning. And if this weekend's matchups are anything like last weekend's, our blood pressures are all in really big trouble. Some incredibly thrilling matchups by some of the league's youngest quarterbacks that are really changing the game right in front of us. Meanwhile, there are swirling questions around some of the NFL's biggest veteran names, including a guy named Tom Brady. This Sunday, it's the NFL's version of the Final Four, battling it out for a spot in the Super Bowl. We're not done. I mean, we're trying to we're trying to go out there and, and win the AFC Championship and then try to get to the Super Bowl. Patrick Mahomes in the Kansas City Chiefs, one win away from making it back to the big game for the third straight year. For the end zone, for the win! Coming off a sensational victory against the Bills, considered one of the best NFL postseason games ever. I kind of turned the page quickly, and I'm ready to go. Uh, just try to get, keep getting better every single day. But there's a history-making Bengals team ready to stand in their way. It's a matchup Mahomes had his eye on earlier this season. Second-year quarterback Joe Burrow leading Cincinnati to their first AFC Championship game in 33 years. The underdogs will have to pull another one out of their hat. Cincinnati wins! In a notoriously loud Arrowhead Stadium. We expect it to be really loud. We're going to have to be great with our communication, our nonverbal communication, just like every week on the road. In Los Angeles, a couple of California teams. The Rams and 49ers will take their division rivalry to new heights with a trip to a home state Super Bowl on the line. We're excited to play in front of our home fans. There's no question about that. The 49ers head into the weekend with six straight wins against the Rams. I mean, we know these guys as well as, as well as possible, playing for a third time now. It'll, nothing will really surprise us, I wouldn't say. As a new guard of NFL quarterbacks vie for a shot at Super Bowl stardom, speculation swirling about the future of some of the biggest names in the game. Fans wondering if they've seen seven-time Super Bowl champ Tom Brady take his final bow. Aaron Rodgers still hasn't committed to returning next season. And in Pittsburgh, two-time Super Bowl champion quarterback Ben Roethlisberger announcing his retirement after 18 years. I retire from football, a truly grateful man. And on the other side of this weekend's big games, all eyes go to February 13th. That is when the Super Bowl is slated to take place in Los Angeles. Officials there are already saying any fan who shows up entitled to a free vaccination, they will be rapid tested and everyone will be handed a free KN95 mask and encouraged to wear them when they're not eating and drinking during the big game. Tom? Well, you should get that if you pay for a Super Bowl ticket because at least you should get that. All right, Morgan, <laughs> thank you so much. You know, guys, there's so right? much pressure on these teams, not just to win, yeah. but last weekend was the greatest weekend in football I history I ever, so they got to deliver. Yeah. Also, I Tom. thought eating and drinking is all you do during football, yeah. I mean, as far <laughs> as I'm playoffs. concerned. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who do we like? Who do we like? Uh, Chiefs, Rams. Okay, got three. I'm rooting for the Bengals. Okay. Yeah. New people. Yeah. Right. In my house, we've got us. We've got to pull for the Chiefs. So. I'm going for the Doritos commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Stick around because there is much more coming up on today in 30. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. <laughs> Five, seven, four, three. 
there is some late breaking news for us. The Iowa caucuses by the man who never All right, it just did too. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. We're back with the reason that football fans are once again cheering for NFL great Jerome Bettis. Yeah, the bus. It's not for his legendary career on the field, but the goal he's now working towards off it, a college degree. Love the bus. And decades yeah. after he left Notre Dame for the pros, he re-enrolled and is now months away from filling a promise that he made to his mom. NBC's Ann Thompson has definitely the best story of the day and she really shows it's never too late to pursue <laughs> a dream. Hi, Ann. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. This really is a wonderful story. You know, Jerome Bettis says when he was in college, he always thought of himself as a student athlete. When he left, the athlete took prominence as he became the heart of the Pittsburgh Steelers, leading them to a Super Bowl victory in Super Bowl 40. Well, now he's a student again, pursuing a different title. The bus is back in school. Jerome Bettis, who powered through NFL defenses for 91 touchdowns and ran his way into the Hall of Fame, is once again at Notre Dame. You are Notre Dame class of? Oh my goodness. Class of 2022? <laughs> <laughs> Wow, I didn't think about that. 27 years after he earned that nickname in college, he's here to finish his business degree, more than twice the age of his fellow students. What's it like to be back at school at age 49? <laughs> it is so strange uh, because I am I'm so behind the times. I mean, I'm a, a dinosaur. I don't know where anything is. I'm, I'm struggling with the technology. They take notes on iPads. He uses a pen and gets lost in new buildings. But some things are familiar, like the frigid January weather. Jerome, where are your gloves? I left my gloves. I... <laughs> Four courses from graduation, Bettis is just another senior, sort of. Everyone kind of knows who the boss is, especially Notre Dame. Bettis left Notre Dame his junior year for the NFL. A 1993 first round draft pick for the Los Angeles Rams, he became a power running icon with the Pittsburgh Steelers. A six time pro bowler, Walter Payton man of the year, Super Bowl champion, but not a college graduate. Why is it so important for you to get that degree? One, that I complete the task at hand. That's what I wanted to do. Also, I promised my mother that I would get my degree. But most importantly, I have two children. For them to see dad finish a commitment, I think it says a lot uh, to them. Are you a better student at 49 than you were at 18, 19, or 20? I, I am a much better student at 49 because I want to learn. I want to know all of this information. To put to work in his current businesses, trucking, staffing, development, and marketing companies, as well as a TV personality during the NFL season. This week, this is the only thing that counts. 27 years later, Bettis' football scholarship is still good. Of the 21 members of his football class, 20 earned their degrees. Notre Dame President Father John Jenkins says Bettis will be the 21st. I say to all our coaches uh, that, uh, that there are three things we should be concerned about. First is integrity. 
uh, do things the right way. Second is help these kids get a degree and do well in their lives. And the third is, is winning on the field. And J Jerome's getting a degree after all his success just underscores how important that is. Back in the locker room where he first found national fame. I was somewhere right in here. Bettis shows me the traditions. Now, the first sign, you've got to make sure. And that one, you just want to tap it because there we go. Today, pursuing a different kind of glory with the same enthusiasm. This is that, that moment where you, it, it's all coming together. I mean, right now, it's, it's got me itchy. Are you ready to go? <laughs> I'm not ready to go. I'm excited, though. This May, he will graduate at Notre Dame Stadium, fulfilling the promise he made to his mom. This is uh, education related, and you can never take away the education. Finishing one of the best runs of his life. Now this story was a whole lot of fun for me to shoot because I'm a Notre Dame grad and I serve on the board. And over the years I've crossed paths with Jerome and I've always found him inspiring, but never more so than what he is trying to accomplish today. Guys, oh, so wow, admirable. I yeah. think he should be the commencement story. speaker yeah. at his own graduation. Absolutely. How cool would that be? Oh. I, and what about those? I, what about those kids in his classes? Like it, again, just. You're sitting in your math class, yeah. and all of a sudden you're like, what? That the bus? That's the bus. He, <laughs> that's wrong. You know what's funny? Yeah, well, what's funny, because they're all masked. I mean, he can walk around campus pretty anonymously because he's masked and in heavy winter clothes. But when he sits in class, he's obviously older. And then when they ask his name, it's like, you know, the light bulb goes off in the kid's head. Is one of the kids said, he's got a wife, two kids, and four businesses. I'm going home and doing homework and sitting on the couch watching the yeah. Food Channel. And it's <laughs> kind of like, they're, you know, they're on different planes. <laughs> but he participates in class and he said the hardest thing is not to keep raising his hand the whole time oh, so Aaron Thompson. he loves it great story That's it so is a great cool. story and it's I, inspiring yeah. he doesn't have to go back you no. know and i want no. we would all love no. to go back to college at some point no, just no. Have oh yeah no. oh no yeah college is great no. yes oh, i've seen back to school back. Rodney dangerfield yeah. i'm going back yeah we are i just want to go back to the pledging yeah definitely thank you Aaron. that was wonderful these days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. Our week-long journey across America, from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital, you rarely see. It's your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. In the city of angels, two kindly old ladies wanted to help homeless men get off the streets forever. And so they did. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, the new podcast from Dateline and Keith Morrison. Make the most of your day with... Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. What are you doing for teachers who feel that they're being stretched too thin? Did you understand how prevalent hunger was in your own community? Oh, yeah.
are back with our special series at home today with Joe Martin. And this one is perfectly timed for all of us here in the Northeast. These are great today. So Jill is sharing some snow day home hacks or really anybody. These are really good. They'll help us gear up for these cold weather days. And that means major deals for all of you at home. So scan that QR code at the bottom of the screen to see them. So Jill, we're about to be living in a winter wonderland. So what do you got for us? Well, hey guys, you know, the family guy said that we're nonsense. I mean, the last snow day, Al and everybody, I organized my batteries. Wow. I mean, wow. what's nonsensical <laughs> about that? So uh, I have some great new hats she's not helping us. coming up. I mean, come on, really? And the, today's National Let's Have Fun Day? What's not fun about that? But I have some great hacks coming up. But first, I ask you guys how you spend your snow days. Take a look. I used to love a good snow day when I was little. So many people use snow days for different reasons. I use snow days to organize. I love to declutter. But I'd love to know what our anchors do on snow days. So let's first check in with our weather experts, Dylan and Al. We love to go outside and take family pictures. The lighting is the best. Way better than in here. Well, the snow has stopped. For me, a perfect snow day is a good book a hot cup of chocolate, and a roaring fire. And ideally, a fireplace. I'm no weather person, but if it's a snow day, you can find me trying to convince the kids to stay inside and watch a movie. It's a carrot. That is a carrot nose. But you'll probably find me outside making a snowman, begrudgingly. So a couple of things happen on snow days in my house. If they have school, if they have somewhere to go, I set out their boots all their boots and stuff like that so they don't have to try to find them. And if we're free, my kids love to sled, snowboard, ski, all that good stuff. They don't get it from me, but they love it. Have a good snow day. <laughs> so you said you like to use snow days to get organized. What are some of your ideas? All right, so these are great for everyone, and some of these are going to blow your mind. Let's start with the first one, the Trolley Bags Lotus Sustainables. You have them there in the studio. They retail $49.99. Now, idea. it's an all-in-one four-bag system. Oh, it includes an insulated cooler bag plus holders for your eggs, for your wine. Okay. Make shopping faster and organized. You'll never need plastic bags again. Oh, Each bag it. holds over 70 pounds, two colors in the trolley bags easily separate, separated by Velcro. And get this, they're machine washable. They were created by a wife and a husband team in 2017 hmm. when California was growing through its plastic bag ban. The retail, $49.99, the deal for the set, 25, wow. that's 50% off. Aren't those it. awesome, guys? Those are. Cool. So great. Next. All right, next up is a, a cult favorite and a fan favorite, the Earth Day everyday bundle by clean cult now if you use these products it's incredible we're getting a deal on them the retail 101.91 clean cult's mission is to fix the cleaning industry and redefine clean from packaging to ingredients to efficacy get ready to hear what's in this bundle five items liquid dish soap all-purpose cleaner liquid hand soap liquid laundry detergent natural soap bar safe for all skin types can be used on hands body and face Clean Cult is also the first zero waste cleaning brand in nationwide retail so stores and is currently distributed in over 5,000 awesome. retail stores. It also comes with the bottles, so you just refill oh, everything oh. and really eco friendly and great. The oh, retail awesome. 10191. The deal for this whole set is $49. Wow. That's 50% off. 60 seconds left for the All next one. All right, year. something I. Something I splurge on, and I take laundry very seriously. I love doing laundry, and this is the must-haves kit by Laundress. I'm going to be buying a lot of these. The retail is $79. Laundress set out to create solutions that increase the life lifespan of clothing and household items while helping eliminate the harsh chemicals and cost of dry cleaning. The kit includes four of their best-selling products. I use these. They're awesome. Bundled exclusively just for us. Nothing nonsensical about that. <laughs> so you get the wool and cashmere shampoo, the delicate wash, the sports detergent, and the stain solution. You can go on today.com to see what each one does, but clearly spelled out. The retail 79, the deal 32, that is 60% off. Nice. And last up for this one, 
on a cold day and on any day, actually, yeah. the Ion Mug and Charging Coaster by Zumi. These the retail are cool. $169.99. Mm -hmm. I know, get this, Craig. Okay, the Ion Mug and Charging Coaster is a 12 ounce stainless steel self heating coffee mug with lid and built in battery. The mug keeps coffee, tea, hot cocoa warm up to three hours or keep it on the charger coaster yeah, all charger. day for heating. Oh, Has wow. Three adjustable See? temperature levels. Oh. Comes in three great oh, colors yeah. white, bronze, or black. Easily nice. clean, but you have to hand wash. Great safety feature. The Ion Mug will turn off automatically after three hours if no liquid is detected in the oh. mug. Retail one sixty nine ninety nine. Mm -hmm. The deal forty nine wow. seventy one percent off. That and we great. should mention that today makes a small share of revenue from your purchases. Good yeah. stuff. Right. This is awesome. Yeah. Thank you. And take a quick look at these products one more time. You can shop Smell these it. deals and more at today.com slash deals. I believe, I believe every dream. Every journey, every triumph. And it all starts here. Let the celebration begin! The excitement is in the air. The United States wins the Is he superhuman? Feel the magic every day. She is a superstar. Yeah. Kayla, we are cheering we you are. on. Sean White! And share every moment with us at the Winter Olympics. Today. Today. Today, Today. Today is where the games begin. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. What happened here is a story of loss and salvation. There were residents who hung on for dear life. This is where you took shelter in this closet. I took shelter right in this closet right here. Rioters banged down one of the doors. Have you found a way to reconcile it a year later? It really hurt to see this place that I love so much treated with such disrespect. Was it an act of cleaning or an act of healing? This is really cool today. We are kicking off a new food series. It's called Today Table, and we make your dinner planning super easy. Okay, how simple? This is how simple we're doing it. You can order the ingredients for the recipe we're about to show you. All you have to do is scan that QR code, and like any grocery service, once you just check out, schedule a pickup time, a store delivery, and it will be delivered. You know to what the you always say? I wish I could do that recipe, but I don't have the ingredients. Well, we're now gonna get started. Can. Here's our friend Gabby Dulkin. She's the creator of What's Gabby Cooking, and she joins us from her home in LA. Gabby, you are our very first chef who is taking us down this road. We're so excited. So, what are you gonna make for us this morning? So today we're making a barbecue chicken quinoa salad, which is one of my Yum. favorite things to make on a weekend. It's great for lunch. It's great for dinner. You could prep it ahead and take it for work. It's just like beyond easy. Okay. Um, it all starts with a little bit of slow cooker. So these are just some boneless, skinless chicken thighs that I'm literally going to put into my slow cooker with barbecue sauce. That's it. Like truly, you could throw an oh, onion in there if you this. wanted to. Okay. Yes. Dump. Yeah. You could you could like maybe let your seven year old or eight year old do this. It's like whatever. I feel like it's appropriate. You put it on a slow cooker and you basically forget it for six to seven hours. Okay. Then, then you what? go ahead and you you make the rest of your bowl. So over here we just have some quinoa. You could also use rice or farro or couscous. whatever kind of grain you want to use. Some couscous would totally work. Mm -hmm. Orzo, whatever. Um, this is some fresh corn cut off the cob. If you mm. want to use frozen corn, be my guest. Okay. Like, just make sure it's thawed. So that's not cooked, right? You just cut it right off. No, I, I'm, like, a little obsessed with, like, just raw corn. Yeah. Some people think I'm weird, but it's so good, especially, no, like, in crunch. peak corn season. Yeah, I love it. Yes. It's so good. Right, you get it. Um, black beans, but you could totally use any other kind of beans you want as well. Mm -hmm. And then here's the chicken that was in the slow cooker that I made. I made this one yesterday, obviously. But basically, when it comes out, you just take two forks and you use them to shred it up. And then this can just go right oh, into your grain bowl mixture. Oh, my God. Can you put more chicken. barbecue sauce if you want? <laughs> you Like, load it up. Be my guest. Add a little ranch, Some whatever you want. Some of us like this... condiments. Yeah, we're condiment people. <laughs> 
right? Mm. <laughs> Who isn't? Everyone, anyone who's not a condiment person is questionable. <laughs> um, so this is the base. And then you're literally just going to put this in a bowl and garnish it with every condiment you could want. You could put guacamole on this. Oh, you could put wow. extra barbecue sauce on. I feel on. like this is a good I'm, kid situation, I think they would too. eat that. Yeah. Hundred percent. I mean, my daughter eats it. She's one. I just like break things up for her and you know shove now, it down her mouth. Do you serve that hot or cold, or you, can you do it both? Either hot, cold, or room temperature, whatever you want. If you're doing it and like prepping it and taking it to work, I would say just do it at room temp. Um, okay. And maybe if you're going to add the avocado, just add it right before Careful. you serve it because yeah, otherwise, that knife is we large. don't like witnessing this. No, we're I'm a hiding. little afraid. Oh, so now what you know? One time. What? I did slice my hand open on live TV, cutting an avocado oh, open. No. <laughs> See, we we actually sensed that. Yeah, we did. We've come a long way since that day. <laughs> so, so Gabby, how long can this keep if you put it in the fridge? So you could prep this and keep it for like four to five days. Oh. But like I said, add the avocado, add any herbs, scallions, whatever, like day of. What are those, those herbs? Is that cilantro? Are you a cilantro this person? This is cilantro. Mm. Oh, I am. Me if too. you are not a cilantro person, you could easily substitute chives or you could just chop up some scallions and throw some scallions on there as well. you're probably questionable. If, if you don't <laughs> like cilantro, and you know that's about 40% of people out there. Right, tons of people don't. Yeah. Gabby, what does your one-year-old like to eat? What's on her, what's on? Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. she's an, a true little angel. She eats everything. Last night I gave her, uh, we did a deconstructed fish taco with guacamole and she like, wow. it was like she had never seen before the speed that when she was putting fish do, in her mouth. Do you remember <laughs> that you told us on the 8th that you didn't even eat seafood until you were in your 20s? <sighs> I didn't. So yeah. I'm trying to like fix her before she goes through what I went through. And I only ate pasta and grilled cheese until I was in college. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> See, my husband's diet. But isn't that funny? You just look at how much hope there is. So what if that's what you eat? You're a chef and now your daughter's eating shrimp Wait, and all kinds of stuff. Can we just garnish a little cheese? We have to go, but I'd like to just oh. see some cheese oh, on yeah. top because... <laughs> To yeah. me, a, di a dish I'm isn't a complete without a cheese garnish. <laughs> I'm a heavy cheese garnish me kind too. of person. I yep. love cheese, Look so, like, that. really get in there. Sometimes mm. I just mm. use the garnish straight into my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Fistfuls of the garnish. Wow. That feels Gabby. Right. good. Okay, I know Gabby, thank you. What I'm going to do, I'm going to mm. make that for, for Friday dinner. Oh, Friday dinner. I mean, it could be there. So nice. remember that you can shop the ingredients and tools for this recipe with help of our sponsor, Walmart. That's so cool. By scanning that QR code. Or you can just text FOOD to 34318, and we should mention today collects a commission from purchases made through our link. That was a lot. So but good. You want to come back next week, though? Yeah, it'll be good. We're going to count down to Thursday's start of the Winter Olympics. Plus, we've got an entire week of Super Bowl commercial sneak peeks. Have a great Friday. Enjoy the snow. We'll see you all next week. Bye-bye. Christmas, there's usually a lot of overindulging, so you may want to lighten things up. Okay, so why not go vegan at times? That's, so that's the name of the new cookbook from New York Times bestselling author Jessica Seinfeld, and it's chock full of recipes that are so simple and delicious, you may not miss the meat. Jessica's here. You guys have a real connection, the well, two of you. we're sort of related. Right. Yeah. Or yeah. we're going to be related. Right. How? Well, her cat. Our, our cats are engaged. Well, her that, cat, Javier. What? Oh, look. Oh, wait, he's on the left. Have yours oh, on wait, the left? Oh, y'all actually did an engagement photo? Well, that's wait. not Eleanor on the oh, right. Oh, but no, it looks like Eleanor. Well, no, COVID, yeah. No, actually, Eleanor looks more like Javier. Okay, I'm but, confused. Oh, Javier's Javier's cat on the left. That's my cat, cat on the left. Okay. My cat, Javier, is marrying Eleanor. Barbara's cat. Barbara's cat. Sister's my sister's cat. cat. Yeah, they're engaged. Uh, you know, I just want to say... Why is there a love between the two of them? They just aren't? Why not? Okay. Look at them. Okay. What do they Look have in common? Them. Javier's on the right, Eleanor's on the left. How yes. did they meet? She's even? a little rough and tumble in yeah. that picture. Yeah, she really is. <laughs> how, now, did they, how did they meet? They met online. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you know what? This is not going to work Wait, out but well. Jessica, <laughs> okay, honestly, yes. we just we couldn't let you go <laughs> without getting you a little wedding dress for Eleanor and a little tuxedo oh, for Javier. Oh, so sweet. Okay. Oh well, this is Are a big announcement. Yeah, yes, this I'm, is a this big is, announcement. And if y'all want weird. a venue for the wedding, <laughs> y'all yes. can come here. Do you do weddings? Yeah, we do pet weddings. Remember That's weddings on the plaza? We've yes. never done a pet wedding. Let's do it. A cat <laughs> no, wedding. We have okay. to ask you, is okay. Javier vegan? Um, no, okay. he's not vegan. Okay, um, he's <laughs> vegan at times, but we're we're working on him. He's the hardest one in the family. All right. What what inspired this? Is it just because people like to be vegan for a little while, but they don't want to commit? No, I think they feel like they are going to fail. Oh, and oh, oh, I oh. hate that word failure around food. I think there should be no shame yeah. associated with food. Well, that's why we like the at times. This is just yes. for when you feel like stepping it up a little. And actually, Hoda thinks you wrote this book for her because she was vegan for two days. Oh. That, it was really great. I yeah. felt good during those two yeah. days. Well, that's so, the point. If you yeah. feel really See? great, you keep doing something. Okay, so Jessica. sloppy I'm here jo to make it easy okay. for you. Sloppy Joe's? Sloppy Joe's. We have these for meat. dinner. Yeah. Okay. And that is also the point. Get people eating the foods they already like. Just make them vegan. Okay. okay. And so let's let's do this one really quick because okay. I think we took up a lot of time Sorry. in this segment. So well, yes. large top here with our red pepper. We're gonna throw it in the food processor. Yum. Jenna, do you like to use it? Um, sure. Processor? No, okay. I don't pulse love that. To, okay. Pulse it a couple times. So it's the same size, it's easily just, topped. This look how beautiful. It is. Beautiful. It's all, it's all here. Yep. Okay. Sauteed. What do you add in there? This is onions. This what's this in is here that. is olive? that. Is, no oil or anything. Yeah. Olive oil, onion, garlic and our peppers that okay. we just chopped. Okay. Now we're going to put in our cauliflower. Oh, yeah. Cauliflower. Yeah, so did we're going to cook did this. Did you pulse, for, pulse that yep. in the thing too? Yeah, okay. so okay. it's all done in your food processor. We're going to cook this put for six in. minutes. Yes. And this, what kind of beans are those? These are cannellini beans, yeah. but you can use chickpeas or you can use red kidney beans. And, and then, then we're going to make adding, our sauce, but oh. let's make it over here so we okay. have something to do in okay. this segment. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, okay. This is apple cider vinegar. I this didn't is... know you could actually cook with that. I just like swallow it kind of disgustingly. Oh, you do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, people say you're supposed to. For allergies. Know. Yeah. And Why what... don't you put the water in, Jenna? Okay. Because it's all. Do it. <laughs> Am I doing okay? You're doing <laughs> great. Wait. What was all those spices you're dumping? Yes. <laughs> now you want to talk about it. Okay. This is a little cayenne pepper, chili powder, salt, pepper. Yeah. Okay. Um, we put brown sugar, yeah. tomato oh, paste, sweet, water, yeah. apple cider vinegar. We're gonna mix with that. It. You put uh, it in here? Yeah. Do you want to mix this? Sure. They told me not to give you a knife. That was my instruction. <laughs> Did they? So. Maybe I'll take that wedding dress back. The cat wedding could be off. Let's put okay, this over so you here. Swirl it around and then yeah. you just dump and it right dump on top of that. And dump that in there. And here are our is nice, this what it pretty. Looks like? That is what it looks oh, like. I mean, it, it is delicious. It's, so it is actually delicious. I'm coming over here to bring it. And where this is our bun is. that's um, been toasted with some olive oil in a skillet. Is that good? Yes, yeah, gorgeous. Let's okay. put some pickles on yeah. there. Mm. Is it yummy? Delicious. The pickles are the best part. Mm -hmm. Bread and butter I agree. pickles. Oh. What do you do? I don't. Not sweet, right? Those are sweet and they're delicious. No. <laughs> okay, <well laughs> that's a great idea, actually. Oh. Somebody on my Instagram mm -hmm. said put some vegan cheddar cheese on that and then you're good. And I thought that was a great idea. And here you go. Okay, now, mm. does, is is your family into these? My family's on really board. Gone. It's weird. Actually, my son last night, Julian, said, you don't even need to tell me anymore that things are vegan, because I think they're sick of getting surprised, because I'm like, that's vegan. <laughs> and they're like, okay. Mm, it's spicy and way, delicious. Now, what, what are these real quick? These are, uh -huh. if you have a person in your life who's like, oh, I'm never, I will never eat vegan food, serve them these. What these are that? peanut butter bars. And they are so delicious. I made them last night. This has a graham cracker crust. Look at this. Crust okay. last night. I made them and with a chocolate wafer crust. And this doesn't have any butter crust. or anything? No, it has um, coconut cream, yeah. peanut butter. Oh my god. Isn't that great? But how is that possible? Oh my god. I know. Mm -mm. Those are in my book, Vegan at Times. Are those that is a showstopper. That yep. is a bad, but so is this. I know, but oh. this. Mm. Anyway. I'm so happy. But we're not. We're just All right. We love eating. cats. We love vegan food. Yes. We love oh my you. God, this Tune in to our cat wedding. Yes. Seriously. Details. Really TBD. Yeah. Oh wait. You weird. have to serve this as the cat cake. Yes. Okay. Right with like a little cat nip. Okay. All right. <laughs> For these recipes, head to today.com/food. Three chefs embracing a growing food movement. NBC News correspondent Savannah Sellers is always <laughs> on top of the trends. She found out about three new restaurants here in New York City where you won't find meat on the menu. That's right. Not meat, not cheese. They're vegan, wow. actually. Okay. How about Mexican, Italian, and soul food restaurants, all plant-based, all run by women of color, all under 30. Mm. As you'll see, these three executive chefs are ready to challenge your taste buds. 
It's a sisterhood of restaurants with a purpose, run by young women finding inspiration in their own stories. Chef Zyla Cadillo taps into her Mexican heritage to create her cuisine. My restaurant is Etheria. It is a mess camel bar with vegan-inspired Mexican dishes. Chef Shinari Freeman leans into her southern roots for recipes. My restaurant is called Cadence. It is southern soul food, plant-based focus. And Chef Amara Garib, daughter of an Ecuadorian mother and an Egyptian father, gets her inspiration from her father, who operated a pizza parlor. My restaurant is called Soda Club. It's a wine bar and it's plant-based uh, Italian fresh pasta. Did you catch this detail? All three skip the animal products, but not the flavor. Look, I have to say, when you hear Italian food, when you hear Mexican food, when you hear soul food, I mean, there's a lot of cheese in those, there's a lot of meat in those. I'm Mexican, I grew up with my mom making Mexican food. How is it to make these particular types of food plant-based? For soul food, one thing you have to definitely focus on is the flavor profile. So just playing around with textures a lot, uh, different flavors, cooking techniques. I think the Italian food, you just stick with fresh pasta, you can't go wrong. Mexican people are indigenous people and a lot of our food is from nature and from the gum. So I feel like it easily translated to being vegan. Raise your hand if you're a vegan. Okay, so Amira, <laughs> you're not. What was this process like? I mean, were you like missing the cheese at all on top of a pasta or no? It's really easy to just cover something in cheese and it's delicious. <laughs> and then it tastes good. <laughs> yeah. It was more challenging because I was just trying to find substitutes to make it more traditional, but not traditional at the same time. Yeah. We also have a group chat where one of us will be like, this is a whack cheese, don't use it. Or this <laughs> yeah. is a really good one, you should try it out, <laughs> stuff like that. You're all under 30 and you have the titles of executive chef at restaurants in New York City. I mean, how cool is that? Pretty cool. <laughs> <Same>. <laughs> How's this been to go through together? Better than going alone. Mm -hmm. That's true. We're able to learn a lot from each other mm. um, and also learn a lot about ourselves, how we cook, and how to run restaurants. Their boss had full faith they could do just that. Ravi Darasi, founder and CEO of Overthrow Hospitality, who owns all the restaurants, decided to give them a shot at starting their own culinary concepts when they were working at the company in different positions. Was it this purposeful decision to give three women of color this opportunity to be executive chefs of New York City restaurants? I think subconsciously intentional, mm. if that makes sense. Mm. They were already in the company and the best suited for these positions. Over 65% of our 300 some odd employees were women and people of color. So we made the very clear decision to put more people of color in places of authority. So as they're hiring, they see through the lens of their selves. Of course, a taste test had to be part of this assignment to see how they stand up to the real thing. First, plant-based Italian from the Soda Club. So where should I start? Definitely with the ravioli. With the ravioli, okay. My favorite, yeah. That is amazing. You good? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm having a moment. Next, vegan-inspired Mexican food from Eteria. The mango salsa looks delicious. It was so good. Oh my goodness. And finally, I had to try a dish getting rave reviews. Fried lasagna, a soul food favorite at Cadence. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm blown away. Sign me up. <laughs> I know, right now all three women say they come up with these innovative recipes by doing their research, which really just means getting to go out to eat a lot. And oh, they all say I'm they're in. more focused on the flavor and mm -hmm. the texture rather than just making sure that it mimics non-vegan food. And I have to say, when I was eating that, it's not like I was eating vegan dishes, I was just eating great food. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. I believe, I believe. Every dream, every journey, every triumph. And it all starts here. Let the celebration begin! The excitement is in the air. Magic every day. She is a superstar, yeah. Kayla. We are cheering <laughs> you on. And share every moment with us at the Winter Olympics. Today, 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 today is where the games begin. News is happening now. Look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. Tonight, the major announcement of the COVID vaccine. And this is a significant moment. 
your news whenever it happens, wherever you are. It's here now. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. This morning on Today Food, one of our favorites, Katie Lee Beagle. That's right. She is Hi. out with a new Hi. cookbook. It's not complicated. All of the recipes, simple, made with real ingredients that you probably already have in your house. Mm -hmm. Where's the baby? Where's the baby? Uh, good. You want to see the baby? It's all about the baby, right? Forget the book. Oh, wait. Okay, it's good. Oh, wait, we want to see it. Oh, yes. That's what we're talking yes. about. Where's Here Iris? Oh, Iris. Iris. Say hi, baby. Oh, hi. That's a bundle. Hi. Katie Lee, <laughs> Katie Lee, do you just love being a mama? It looks like you were born oh for it. Oh my gosh. I love being this baby's mom more than anything in the world. Oh, I mean, oh she's, she's just so, so sweet and cuddly. She's very well fed, if you can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> <laughs> of course she is. <laughs> and we should point out, Katie Lee, that we're saying Katie, Katie Lee Beagle yes. is new to all yes. of us here at the show. Tell us. That's right. I, I am now a beagle. Um, <laughs> I added my husband's name because I thought our family should all have the same last name. Oh, so, well, congratulations. I'm Irish's mom. Well, congratulations. <laughs> so there's, there's, there's the Thank family you. photo. Katie, you're, you know, I'm you, gonna, you, you got your fourth cookbook here. Uh, yeah, you can hand off. You want to hand off your baby? Yeah, no, but listen. <laughs> I'm going to give her to grandma. Grandma's okay. sitting here. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I wondered, right, like, ahead, how you kind of came, you know, what was the, you know, like the motivation behind cookbook number four? But as you're holding the baby, I mean, you must want to do like a baby cookbook, too. <laughs> I know next has to be baby food, mm -hmm. but really with this, I felt like life's complicated enough. Your food shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. I want to make recipes that are easy and fast with everything that I have in my pantry. I'm not looking for a laundry list of ingredients. So these are easy. You can get them on your table and they taste great. And so you're going to make two, you're going to make two uh, uh, pasta dishes that are uh, vegetarian friendly. Oh, I love that. <laughs> baby. Vegetarian friendly, right? You, you guys like eating a little meatless meals in there in your house? Yeah, we like doing our meatless Mondays, but we also love our burgers and steaks. So it's just about a balance. So I've got here for you just a big old bowl of mushroom bolognese. It's a super mm. simple. Um, with this, you just put a variety of mushrooms into a food processor, saute them up with onions and garlic and tomato and red wine and let it simmer. And it's super yummy. It's a good one to have in the fridge and just kind of pick on. Now I'm going to take you over here and we're going to make a spinach artichoke pasta. So yeah. this is a great creamy pasta. Think about spinach artichoke dip and add pasta to it and melted cheese. Oh, so wow. what could be bad about that? So I'm just gonna add some olive oil to my pan. And this is a recipe that was actually my husband Ryan's idea when we were doing quarantine because it was all stuff that we had. So <laughs> I've got my garlic going in the pan. I'm going to add to it a can of artichoke hearts. Mm, I love artichoke yeah, hearts. Me too. And then I've got some frozen spinach that I thawed and squeezed all the water out of it. Mm -hmm. You could also use fresh. Just cook it down. It's really important to squeeze that water out. And I've got a little bit of oregano mm -hmm. or Italian seasoning. Mm. You can add a little pinch of crushed red pepper to it mm. to get a little bit of heat. And you just want to let this cook for a couple of minutes. Let the flavors bloom of that garlic and the seasoning. And then to this, I'm gonna add some cream cheese. So this is oh, gonna make it really rich dressing. and creamy. Mm. And you can also substitute a light cream cheese if you wanna lighten this up, or you can nah. put a little Greek yogurt in it. <laughs> <laughs> or just go for it. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> Think about you know what you're eating at another meal. I'm gonna add a little bit of the pasta water to it. Mm. And this helps thin out the sauce, but it also helps hold everything together because it's got that pasta starch in there. We've seasoned our water so that it has a nice flavor to it. And then you add your pasta to it. So I'm using a rigatoni. Penne would work great as well. When I'm doing these pasta bakes, I really like to use a short pasta. And just have that in all. Oh, oh Iris, loves it. It. Iris. Iris loves it. Iris. <laughs> Iris says, yeah, mommy, I'll take that. It wasn't a binky in her mouth. Pasta. It was a rigatoni. <laughs> <laughs> She's my kid, right? Yeah. She likes to eat. All right. So you let that cook till it gets nice mm -hmm. and creamy. Mm. Top it with cheese. I've yeah. got just shredded mozzarella here. Oh, my gosh. It's like it's Parmesan so good. cheese. Oof. We're going to have to put the and rest then, on the website. All right, Katie Lee, oh, Beagle, we love you. 
Oh, well, let's Wait, look let's at it. Let's take it out of the oven. Take a look. Oh. Well, I'll just do the sell here while you do yeah. it. Today.com oh, slash yeah. food if you want to enjoy yes. that. And yeah. congrats on the book, Katie. It's not complicated. It certainly piece. isn't. We appreciate you. <laughs> I believe, I believe. Every dream, every journey, every triumph. And it all starts here. Let the celebration begin! The excitement is in the air. The United United States States wins the is he superhuman? View the magic every day. She is a superstar. <laughs> Kayla, we are cheering <laughs> you on. And share every moment with us at the Winter Olympics. Today, today, today. Today, today is where the games begin. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just made it. week-long journey across America from Washington, D.C., a side of our nation's capital you rarely see. This your last movie. <laughs> <laughs> Was talking smack part of this? We're here to start conversations about the big things happening in our world because it's not my job to tell you what to think. My job is to think about what you tell me. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Watch Today in 30 on your schedule, streaming every day on Today All Day. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Listen to The Thing About Helen and Olga, new from Dateline, wherever you get your podcasts. Joined by one of our favorite chefs, Ooh. our Bobby Flay. That's right. He's got a new book out next week called Beat Bobby Flay. Conquer the kitchen with 100 plus battle tested oh. recipes. Oh. Yeah, this morning, Bobby's teaching us how to win in the kitchen with one of his all time favorite dishes. Bobby, just when you think you know everything about chili, you're going to do something. Is it a secret ingredient? Is it like, are you going to add some coffee grinds to it? Or are you going to, what are you doing? You're just taking the meat out? You're robbing us? Well, I, I, it is a vegetarian dish, but Carson, you have to understand, first of all, on Beat Bobby Flay, I don't get to decide what the signature dish that we're cooking is. It's the other chef. Oh, that's right. So I got challenged to vegetable chili, and also my girlfriend doesn't eat meat, so, you know, I got to adjust. Smart so man. how do you make it, it good? Works. Smart man. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. So come on over. So um, I'm going to start by making the base of the chili. Every, I always say everything good starts with onions and garlic. So we're going to start with some onions and garlic and then some tomatoes as well. And, of course, you need to bring some spices into the game. And, Bobby, so well, who's like your girlfriend? <laughs> yeah. oh, uh, you buried the lead. I, I, wow. Just kidding. I, I, I knew you were going to go there. Yeah. I knew yeah. you were going to go there. Well, you brought it up. Uh, she will re she's going to rename uh, Nameless for now. Okay. But, but okay. thanks for asking. Oh, I'm just going to Google it. I'll have it by the end of the oh. segment. Wow. <laughs> All right. So the go chili ahead. Went right out the meeting? window. Sure did. <laughs> Nothing remains nameless, Where'd you Bobby. Meet? It's How'd 2021. You How'd you guys meet? <laughs> Anyway, so then you add then you add a dark beer to the uh, uh -huh. to the chili, which yeah. is one of those secret ingredients, right? And then this becomes the base of it. Now, Carson was asking, like you know, you rob us of the meat, but you can use things that are veg that are vegetables that actually wow. give us the uh, the texture. Very of the attractive. Meat, meat so like. So we're going to <laughs> very we're going to Carson uh, founder Carson founder on the gonna, internet. We're not I will gonna not say it out loud. Name, but we he promise. Very, but very impressive. No, he didn't. He did. No he way. did. Yeah. Okay. Vegan so or we vegetarian? Have, uh, <laughs> no. Veg you really are dating up, Bobby. You are really wow. dating up. You are a lucky wow. man. All right. So anyway, this guy went off the rails. Mix, what what vegetables are you using there, Bobby, to replace the meat? So thank you meat? so much, Al. Thank you so much. So we have uh, we wow. have eggplant and portobello mushrooms Ooh. because they they have that sort of meaty texture. Mm -hmm. We're gonna add that to the to the chili as well, and we're gonna let this cook for a little while. And then basically, what happens is you have the base of the chili, and it mm -hmm. looks and feels like chili. It tastes like chili, but it's completely meatless. And, and then the thing I love about chili is that it becomes like this canvas for all these like really cool garnishes that you can put on top, which is really the key, oh, that's right? A nice so Ooh, that's beautiful. We have some yogurt that uh, has a little bit of uh, uh, shishito peppers in it and some lime juice. Mm. We want that nice cooling effect. 
And then I have some avocados in here with some um, with some diced red onions mm-hmm. and some chilies. I'm going to put some avocado mm. on top. It's almost like uh, the chili becomes a vehicle for all these cool things that you want to eat. A, little, a, a few tortilla chips with some crunch. Mm. You got to yeah. make sure you have that crunch right. going. Hey, Bobby, does, it, does the chili Mexican take cheese. less time because it's meat-based? I mean, vegetable-based than, yeah. than a meat-based one would? It does, Al, because, you know, if you're cooking something like eggplant or portobello mushrooms, it's going to uh, it's going to cook a lot quicker. You just want to make sure that the mushrooms, then the eggplant mm-hmm. cook all the way through because then it absorbs all the flavor from the base of the chili itself. You want to cook at that dark beer. You want to get some of that earthiness as well. And uh, and then, you know, you, you just you, st- you start to garnish it a little bit of lime zest on top. So you have some acidity, you have some spiciness, you have a little sweetness, mm. all the good things. And it's a uh, it's a very warming dish. I have to say, like when I first said when I first heard that I had to make vegetable chili mm-hmm. on beef Bobby Flay, I was kind of bummed out because, mm-hmm. right. you know, I am I am a meat eater. And um, but I have to say, like the eggplant and the mushrooms do a great job Ooh. of substituting yeah. it. And of course, it's a little bit healthier. I mean, people are eating a lot more vegetables. I was going to say, are, are plant ba- is plant based having its moment now, Bobby? Oh, it's unbelievable. You know, as a chef. We constantly have to adjust to uh, to the trends of the way people are eating. And I will say one thing. People are eating healthier and healthier, and I don't think that's ever going to go in mm-hmm. reverse. I think it's only going to keep going in that direction. Bobby. So we have to really get very comfortable with cooking vegetables in lots of different ways. Yeah, what did your girlfriend say when she tried that oh, first wow. bite? I was just <laughs> curious. She's trying to help you here. Uh, trying no, to help what, a brother out. So what, what did she say? Who? Um... You know what? I haven't made this for her yet, to be perfectly honest. Oh. But you know, it's it's on the dock. Well, it's been it's been it's been the summer now. Now you know it's getting a little yeah, bit. Yeah, right. Well, is she there right yeah. now? You told me to step on in. <laughs> no, she's not here. But, but yeah, yeah, yeah. thanks so much for having me. You're the best, Bobby. We love you so much. Does it's she just fun so to fun to tease you. you? Does she have a key to the elevator? <laughs> <laughs> what else is in your book? We have a couple seconds. What other kind of recipes? Are they all vegetarian? Uh, well, you know, th- there's all kinds of things, from like piri piri chicken to shrimp and grits. Oh. Um, there's some great desserts like a spiced chocolate pudding, um, eggplant rollatini. I mean, mm. you know, um, Salisbury steak. There's, there's really classic home style dishes. Mm. Cool. And then there's a couple of things in that are a little bit fancier. But it's a, you know, if, if you're a fan of the show, I mean, uh, Al's been on the show a couple of times. Um, it's such a fun show, and um, we've, we've, we've shot over 500 episodes. Jeez. Wow. Cool. And, You've only uh, lost so twice. obviously they're not all in this yeah. book. This is volume one, Our, so oh, hopefully wow. there'll yeah. be more volumes. It's a terrific right. book. Bobby. It's a great show. It's a great book. Thank, Thank you, Bobby. Bobby. Good luck Bye. with the relationship. You guys are the best. Yeah. Make the most of your day with Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Savannah and Hoda bring you What You Must Know, the biggest moments of the morning. One Republic! Exclusive interviews. Why did it work for you? You're right. I am more talented than the rest. <laughs> and important headlines. Major medical news this morning. Watch Today in 30 on your schedule. Streaming every day on Today All Day. I believe, I believe. Every dream, every journey, Every triumph. And it all starts here. Let the celebration begin! The excitement is in the air. The United States wins the Is he superhuman? View the magic every day. She is a superstar. <laughs> Kayla, we are cheering <laughs> you are. on. Show wide! And share every moment with us at the Winter Olympics. Today. Today. Today, today. today is where the games begin. News is happening. Now, look at what's making headlines around the world. Right now on Morning News Now. Tonight, the major announcement of the COVID vaccine. And this is a significant moment. Your news, whenever it happens, wherever you are, it's here now. you're in the kitchen and you've got mac and cheese lovers in your house, this is a recipe for you. Vegan chef and cookbook author Chloe Coscarelli created a creamy and craveable plant-based pasta that's good for your health, it's good for the earth. First of all, you're cute as a button. We can't even, we cannot handle your cuteness. Okay, we're going to begin there. How are you? Good morning, Hoda and Jenna. Do you guys ever feel like eating a comforting bowl of creamy mac and cheese, but you still want to get your greens? So it's Earth Day. We can have both. We're making mac and greens, and it's so easy. This is going to come together in minutes. Mac and greens is such a good idea, yes. and this is good for the earth because we're not—it's dairy-free, yes. meat-free. 
Um, exactly. Yeah. There's no cheese, no dairy, tons of greens, antioxidants, vitamins. So we're going to start by just boiling our pasta. I like to use a nice shell or elbow for mac and cheese. You could use any shape. You could also use gluten free. Um, and I like to salt the um, pasta water because this is really your only chance to flavor the actual pasta. Okay. And give that a nice stir and we're gonna want a nice al dente noodle. Mmm, looks so great. All right, let's get started on the sauce. It's so simple. So we're gonna start with a blender. Since we're not using any dairy, we're gonna have a cup of water. We're adding a cup of raw cashews. Okay. This is gonna make our nice creamy texture and base. We're going to blend that up, and if you don't have um, a high-powered blender, you can just soak the cashew nuts overnight to soften them a bit mm. and blend that up into a nice, silky cream sauce. Okay. Wow. So, yummy. Then I like to move to the food processor. This preserves a little bit of texture. We've got five ounces of fresh spinach in here. You can use a bag from the grocery store. You can also shop local if you can from farmer's market. We're adding parsley. This is a super green dish. I don't measure a cup of parsley. I just like to rip it straight from the bunch like that. Mm -hmm. I figure a handful is about a cup. And stems are okay. <laughs> this is Earth Day. We're not going to waste. I then like to add a quarter cup of olive oil. Mm, okay. And you could use any mild oil. You could use coconut oil or any oil that you have on hand. A teaspoon and a half of salt and three garlic cloves. The Italian love to add garlic into mac and cheese. And then we're gonna just blend that up. Wow, that, that looks good for you. And you'll see the greens, they're fresh. We're not even cooking them, which is great. We're gonna preserve all of those vitamins. Oh, and then we're gonna add in. in our cashew cream sauce. Yeah. So what gives it the cheesy flavor? Is it the, the cashew? cashew? Really? It's the garlic, it's the, oh. the creaminess from the cashew, and it's a really mellow, mild, just delicious, comforting dish. Mm -hmm. um, I like to eat this all the time. Mm. I want that. Done. Was that not the easiest it looks um, Simple sauce and ever? delicious. <laughs> and I think for so people with gonna... lactose issues, too. Yeah, brilliant. Exactly. It's all plant-based and dairy-free, which is good for the earth and good for good for you and also you can just eat more of it and feel really light. Um, I'm going to go ahead and toss this with my hot drained pasta. Mm. I mean, so easy. It looks so simple. And once so it you just don't even warm up the, the, the sauce isn't warm or is the cashew warm? Once you just hit it with the warm pasta, it kind of melts uh -huh. in and you can hear it. It sounds like mac and cheese. It's very creamy and smooth. And then I'm going to serve some up. Mm. So you're really getting a ton of greens, but you get to eat them on pasta. Actually, when I first made this dish, I wanted to call it chlorophyll mac because it was like so much <laughs> antioxidants and vitamins. My mom said that sounded really weird. So we went with mac and greens. So I'm going to then, I like to top it with some chili flakes. Oh, that's a good one. And black pepper. And there we have it. That's our mac and greens. It's so, so easy. Any it looks, questions? It looks so good. Well, because you have so much extra, what if we put some in the fridge and we wanted to have it the next day? How, how do you reheat Great it? Great idea. So I actually like to freeze it. Um, just like this, you can take take your big batch, you can throw it in the freezer, and then just um, heat it over stovetop, and it, it um, reconstitutes perfectly. You can add a little bit of water. You can eat your leftovers either cold, kind of like a pasta salad, or you can eat them heated up. So this is a really nice, flexible dish, a great thing to make um, in the week yes. and enjoy and as Chloe, the days go by. We <laughs> love how you hid the veggies for kids. Yeah, too. that's it's so delicious. smart. Thank you, Chloe. You can make this recipe at home. Go to today.com slash food. Good morning. Here it comes. Alerts up and down the East Coast as a potentially historic winter storm takes aim from the Carolinas to Maine. 65 million people bracing for heavy snow and blizzard conditions throughout the weekend. Up to two feet possible in New England. Al's got everything we need to know. Full court press. President Biden recommits to his promise of nominating the first black woman to the Supreme Court. It's long overdue, my 